Okay, there we go. Um, there we go. We are whole. Hey. All right, so. Yeah, let's and switch all this over. Right on the dot. So theoretically, you should be seeing a slide on teaching how to teach. Our speakers today are myself, Zesty, uh, Jojo, Nemphis, yep. Insight, and Houseman. Uh, today's topics that we're going over are what strategies we employ, how we find skill levels of the people that we're playing against, how much information we provide to the individual people that we are teaching, uh, what are good qualities for our students, uh, how do you know that coaching went well as a coach, and why we individually decided to coach. So, starting this off, because I we started off, we wrote down a lot of these individual things. Um, the strategy that I use is prescriptive, which means that whenever I'm working with a student, I provide direct solutions to asked questions. Uh, my direct information is a, is a download, fast and simple. Uh, but it encourages reliance on the coach. I don't know if I pressed the record button. I didn't. There we go. Right. Oh, and it didn't want me to do that. Are we? Yes. Minor technical difficulties. Screen? One moment. You can go to file path. If you're looking for the stream, it's in the Discord chat. There's a link to it there. Cool. Mm, you definitely don't have to with Streamlabs, but I don't use regular OPS. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to see if it demolishes the audio. And mm. if so, then I will redub everyone's voices in a cartoonish <laughs> manner. Well, let's get to it. Yo, that'll let's be sick. To so, okay. that my, my method is prescriptive. Um... Jojo, yours was Socratic? At least yeah, that's so, how I pointed it out. Yeah, that's basically what it is. I don't like to give answers to things directly. Uh, I personally really, really enjoy figuring something out for myself because it's exciting and it makes me feel good. So I, I want the person I'm teaching to feel that too. So instead of just straight up giving them the answer, I try to hint them towards it. I instead ask questions back like, well, why do you think this works or whatever? Try to hint them towards the answer. And so it's better, it's more interactive when they go like, oh, it's because of this, I get it now, right? Instead of me having to just straight up tell them. It's not a bad yeah, plan in general. Not a bad plan. You get one. more positive response when people figure it out themselves. Right. Yeah. They're happier yeah. about that. As so well. long as the so long as the student grasps and is given the tools to solve that problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it can be frustrating. There can be very strong hints, but Well I, no no, but what but what I mean is like if if you're going into stuff like pressure and stuff like that and they don't know frame data yet, they're yeah. not gonna be able to solve those problems on their own. So most like, of that hinting happens during the frame data <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. It's just like that that's why you have to kind of start with like I'm not arguing against you. I'm just saying like yeah. To do that, you have to give them the tools first and they have to be able to use those tools effectively. Mm -hmm. Um and for some people that like might come a little later after the very very basics, but as an overall design for teaching, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it mirrors real life teaching in that regard. Uh, Nemphis actually has a way to, to uh, well, he has something called a spiral curriculum, or that's the way I described it based on what he described it as. Uh, if he wants to go into that more, he can. Oh, let me read this uh, slide. O overview of basic concepts of more advanced elements contained within. Stresses basics while given advanced options since time to shine. Builds on prior exposure, da da da, possible information overlooked. Um, so the two uh, strategies you guys mentioned, I actually use a mixture of both. I use the uh, uh, the one that Jojo uses actually just to gauge uh, if they're actually paying attention. Uh, I want them to kind of, you know, participate in a conversation, make sure that they're actually listening to what I'm saying and it's not just going through one ear and out the other, right? Um, 
But otherwise, I use the uh, the first one you guys showed a slide for. I don't know the names of these. I just you know. I, I called it prescriptive and Socratic. Prescriptive. My uh, yeah. JoJo's is Socratic. Mine is prescriptive. Yeah. So I, I probably most use prescriptive because um, I. You know, I want to give a direct answer, but uh, I also uh, kind of just like try and lead them towards the answer themselves just to make sure, you know, like they're actually paying attention. Um, the spiral curriculum, which you uh, said I have, I mean, I guess it sounds about right. I don't really have technical terms for this stuff, so I don't even know if it is or not, but yeah, it's probably right. <laughs> For for what it's worth, it's it, this is the sort of teaching strategy that most contemporary classrooms employ. Uh, whenever you go through a, a class like Algebra 1 or something like that, the first time around, what will happen is they will teach concepts that are basic and then show a couple of advanced options. And then the second time you go through the course, which is like in Algebra 2, they come back to some of those original concepts, flesh them out more, and then take the advanced concepts and turn them into the basic concepts that you now need to understand. And then they add pile on additional concepts on top of that. It's the idea that you're always rotating through the same material, but you're sort of like improving or adding more complexity each time. Yeah, yeah. that sounds exactly pretty much yeah. what I do. So that sounds about right. Yeah. Though when you put it that way, I don't think you can avoid the spiral curriculum in finding it. I don't avoid. think you can avoid teaching that way because everything built on top of itself that you're entirely yeah, you correct yeah end up <laughs> but like yeah you know, no sorry like when you said you can't avoid it it made it sound like a negative connotation it's a uh, good thing to no know. it's it's <laughs> well i mean whether it's good or bad depends but it, the fact is you can't avoid it i mean that's it has oh, to be oh you can avoid it way. you can avoid well, it easily i, I have I, so many yeah. people that i find <laughs> that just bash their heads against the wall and that's yeah. that's the that's the worst kind way. Yeah. You could, yeah, so I guess you can avoid so, it, but I, yeah, I guess if you're if you're but, teaching but I, the game I, in any sort of learnable way, I guess you can't. Well, no, actually, yeah, I think I think this method so far we haven't gone over anything else, but this method so far it makes sense. It's like going at basic level, going over constructs. If you want to apply it to what you know, Street Fighter, which I think most of us mm -hmm. are teachers in, it's like going over your anti airs going over your pokes like not even going into like like complex combos or complex like like neutral game or spacing or stuff like that it's literally like what button do you press for this situation this very basic situation and then going to the next level of like okay now that you press this button and you created the scenario what do you do from there and so on and so forth like yeah building on everything it makes a lot of sense yeah i yeah, i said important I feel like to talk about doing this poorly, right? Because there's a lot of people who <laughs> may, like write a guide or something and they load in all the advanced options really early on and it's just that information overload that's talked about at the very bottom of the slide there. Basic yeah. guide, here's a bunch of optimal combos. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, it, it depends. Yeah, it depends. Like, because all of, all of those guides and all of those sheets and everything, those are good references. Mm -hmm. But it's like, to give the math example, you don't want to give an Algebra 2 textbook to a kid who's in Algebra 1. You just don't want to do that because it's skipping over a lot of the basic fundamentals. So it's like mm -hmm. if you're a coach and you're trying to teach somebody, make sure you know where their baseline is at. Like get a good gra grasp of that first. Mm -hmm. And the I more people you so teach, glad the you more brought you'll that be up. able to. Because here we are as to how to figure to... that out. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about identifying skill level then. Um, the first option is, of course, to figure it, to ask them what their skill level is, because most of the time they'll tell you, right? But some of them either underestimate or overestimate their positions. So, and obviously it's vague in general, right? It's like, yeah, or it's you super know, vague. Right, Street exactly. Fighter, you have a nice ranking system. You can say, oh, I'm gold, I'm diamond. But in other games, like, oh, I'm good, I'm decent, I'm trash. It's like, what does that really mean? I mean, yeah. I mean there was there there were people that ha are inside of New Challenger that have said things like, I have been playing fighting games for the last 20 years. And then you play them, and <laughs> it seems like they may have pulled the wrong lessons from 20 years worth of playing Street Fighter. But um, you can the the strategy that I would use for figuring out their relative scale level is to like look at their specific tells. So, for example, like a bronze or a rookie player, I can tell that they're at that level because they'll use the wrong buttons or they'll just be mashing weird stuff at weird times. Mm -hmm. When you get to bronze, you're like looking at people that are dashing too much, jumping too much, or using special movement too much. This isn't locked specifically to bronze, but a lot of the time they'll lock their 
movement into a specific arc or something like that. Uh, if somebody is hesitating or not checking certain things, so like if you do a negative two move against somebody and uh, they're relatively new, they won't they won't check you at all. So you can just keep doing it until eventually they'll figure it out. And that's like more of a... I've seen that all the way up to silver because people will be hesitant to want to try anything uh, at that level. A lack of attack and string diversity is another thing that strikes silver players. A lot of the times whenever I see them playing, what they'll do is they'll have one or two specific bread and butters. They'll maybe have one specific frame trap string with glaring weaknesses within it. And they won't really see that. They'll just sort of be like, this is what I've been taught to do in this situation. So dot, 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 here we go. Bad challenges and wrong, improper and wrong oki sort of come together as sort of like, they're challenging at weird times. So like, you'll knock them down with something that has a ton of frame advantage, they won't quick rise, and then they will get counter hit on wake up and then ask you, how did I get hit? I was definitely blocking. Yeah. So those are, th those are tells that will tell you exactly what skill level they're at. Um, I would like to point out that, you know, Core Gaming had a has a wonderful video about why it's good to lose, and inside of it they talk about uh, he talks about um, specifically the idea that there's a bunch of different skill sets that exist inside the game. So like these are not things that you can state that people will explicitly. Like, not all bronze players will be like mashing the wrong buttons. Not all silver players will be you know failing to check certain things because of the lack of knowledge. But yeah, it's a combination. It's a combination yeah, of these things that keep weaknesses. them at these ranks, right? Mm -hmm. And Anyways. it even goes far as, like, you get the gold, and, you know, maybe they're great at four of these points, but they're bad at one or two, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. The, can, these are the ideas that uh, Jojo and I came up with for identifying skill level. Do you guys have any... Uh, does anybody else have any ideas beyond this as to tells? Uh. Or... I mean, it's unfortunately it's it's always going to be a little difficult because even with the these lists, it's like there are variances to when are you mashing buttons? You know, like is the person yeah. mashing buttons all the time, or is it that they're getting put into a pressure point and then they're mashing buttons? Because that could be a gold player. Some gold players are just like that; mm -hmm. they don't know what to do once the pressure's on them. Uh, you talk about like improper oki and stuff like that. Again, that can just be like almost any rank it's just that it depends on like i almost feel the the rank system is not, it's somewhat it's not poisonous flawed. it's very it's very good but in terms of determining what your student needs like if you're doing one-on-one -on -one, it can be a little it can be misleading at times yeah, you you can't tell what someone needs from their rank rank tells no. you very little yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. The rank is not skill level. Either. We're just these are just tells, as in like things which you see these things. I know it's sort of like they sort of correlate to those skill levels, but uh, or those ranks. But generally speaking, these are things where you can say, well, I see, I, I'm looking for these specific things. I'll like sit there inside of a match against the player and watch them, and if they like, and, and I'll see how they try and start pressure against me, or I'll see how they react to block strings where i'll see how they react on knockdowns and stuff like that yeah it really just sums up to you know offense defense and neutral and how good are you with this these are some specific examples that you can look yeah. for to identify and the skill level in those regards yeah. and again as mentioned someone might be really great at offense than terrible at defense you know they know their pressure but then they just mash dp on every wake up right they don't know how to block yeah I mean, yeah, it, it really, it kind of has to take a, a, take a, I don't know, I think the one-on-one -on -one approach is honestly the best way to do it, and that makes it hard because there are, there are like almost infinite new players and only so many decent coaches, um, but yeah, like kind of, at, at least for, at least for identifying skill level, I think the best thing is to just like, yeah, look at a player's recent match, matches, ask them themselves, what do they think, and if they don't know, well then, you know, start from the ground level to be honest if they literally are like i don't know what's going on mm -hmm. either start at the ground level of the game's mechanics or if they just like or if they just say i don't know even though they know the terminology they can do everything in training mode you then have to go to the like mid-match mentality side of things 
it's Maybe it helps to have us looking at far. them too because mm -hmm. um they they will hyper fixate on things like well what lost oh, you yeah. that match uh i dropped this combo that's the only reason i lost yeah. and then you'll go back and look through it and it's like mm. and i'm i'm no. guilty of this with my own replays right i will mm -hmm. i will think about a match and be like well if i didn't drop that combo i would have won but then if i look if i like actually looked at the match i, I jumped a lot or yeah, i did some really dumb stuff on block yeah yeah and that's it's almost like the um it's like a, a labyrinth of choice as to what you need to focus on mm -hmm. but i think when you're trying to teach somebody especially because unlike a lot of other things this all this stuff this whole activity is voluntary you have to pick something that you can work that you can identify that you can put a goal towards and that you can work towards in the immediate I would, oh, wow. I would like to thank you once again because you are the master of fantastic segues because the next thing we're talking about <laughs> is how much oh, information uh, uh, is too much information. Honestly, I couldn't uh, have planned uh, this better. I wanted to add to that, but never mind. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. No, please. We can tie it in. Uh, basically, uh, most of the people I coach on the server are never like brand new, like, you know, just just picked up the game literally know nothing kind of players it's usually if they're if even if they're bronze rank like they've been playing for a, a few weeks like they've uh, skimmed through geese gym they kind of know some of the the very basics uh so i've told you guys before in the text chat that whenever i go into a voice channel with someone and i'm coaching them the first thing i do is i, I roll a cigarette and spend 30 <laughs> minutes just having a chat with them in fact i'm rolling a cigarette right now but uh uh, spend 30 minutes just having a chat with them, getting to know them. Like, have you played fine games before? Oh, which ones did you play? And it's also a great way just to, to get on friendly terms with someone because you start talking about Tekken 7 or whatever they played before. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can also make, um, uh, use Tekken 7, for example, as an example for something explaining. Uh, oh, like, you know how in Tekken 7 you can do this? Well, Street Fighter has this similar mechanic. And it's like, oh, okay, I kind of get that. Yeah, all right, yeah. cool. Um, so that's one thing I use. And while we're talking in that time, um, I will ask them about like, all right, which character do you play? Uh, so do you know what your anti-air button is? And do you know, uh, like, what's a good pressure string you like to use? Okay, what about this happens? And I kind of theory craft because I want to understand if they know their options, if they're using the correct options. And also, when I fight them, I want to see, are they able to put into action what they uh, supposedly know uh, mm -hmm. against me? Or do they just panic? And that goes into another really important thing is I realized maybe one year into coaching, took me too long to realize this, but um, I avoid playing people like coach as much as possible. Um, yeah. uh, I uh, go out of my way to go into my uh, coaching server and find them a, a, a partner of relevant skill level, get that guy to jump into the lobby with us, and I watch them fight each other. Because I realize people who are learning the game fight you uh, way differently than they fight someone on their own level. Uh, mm -hmm. They will be terrified of approaching you, but you put them in, in there with another bronze and they're going in like it's like Rushdown City. Yeah, there's some sort of mysticism. There's yeah. uh, there's something going on like people play differently against Daigo even if they know how he plays just because there's like this. Well, that, that fear is natural. Uh, in the in the coaching session that Jojo and I were in earlier, the the rookie and the super bronze player were go, were going at each other just throwing haymakers left and right. But against when they had to fight me or when I was trying to demonstrate something to them, they would back off and actually try and play neutral and just sort of actually play the game uh yeah properly but that's because if i touched them they took a so much damage that they didn't want to make those mistakes they didn't want to take those risks the problem is humans in general mimic so if your opponent's going crazy and jumping all around you're probably going to do the same without thinking the hard part there is taking a step back you know, looking at yourself and be like, okay, why am I doing this? I don't need to be jumping. Let him jump. I can just anti. -her. In the mid match, yeah. But I, I think even, uh, I don't mean to be pushing us too much to this goal thing, but again, I really think, especially with new players, like, and I mean, even like bronze players, like going into a match and telling yourself, man, I'm going to try anti airing and like taking your opponent out of the equation in those early matches is so important. Because when people start thinking too much about what their opponent's doing, when they don't know what they're doing themselves, they have no time to develop those subconscious reactions. That um, that level, like I think it was level two. I forget the core. Uh, level one's the that automatic. Was. Level two's the thing. Yeah. The so yeah, they, they don't have time to develop those those level one reactions. Or system one, system two, but whatever. Yeah, I, system we understand one. the concept. Oh, yeah. Um, 
so be before we move on to the next one. Oh no, this is the we're we're here for on. now. It's good. Okay, <laughs> okay, we're still here. Okay, well, something important to tack on, probably the last thing. Uh, finding out someone's skill level. There are tells, but not only gameplay ones. You don't. You can tell a lot just by simply asking, like verbal knowledge checks, oh, essentially. Oh yeah, the the way they speak about certain things. Yeah, you can tell how much someone knows or how much they think they know about what they're talking about by just asking them a few simple questions. So, uh, for example, uh, like if I'm playing, uh, if I'm coaching a brand new player, he's like, "I'm new to Street Fighter. I'm new to fighting games." Then I'll just start with like. Uh, have you played any other fighting games before, including Smash? Like, uh, do you, have you done any research prior to coming here and asking for help? Like, what have you figured out for yourself? Right? And then the, yeah. I know how much to actually talk about. Uh, however, if I'm playing someone who's not a new player, like bronze, silver, gold, whatever, then I'll ask instead, what are you struggling with? That question either gives you a good answer or a really bad one. <laughs> uh, and there you really know how much the person knows or, or what they think they need. Uh, if I ask, I get this happens all the time. I'm sure we all get it, but you ask a bronze or a silver player or sometimes a gold player what they need or what they're struggling with. And they'll tell you, uh, my neutral. It's like, are you really in bronze? Really? <laughs> like there are, I know it's generalizing, but you know uh and obviously you know you're gonna find you're probably gonna find players in platinum who jump just as much as bronze players but there are very very common problems or more, more common within those skill levels so so yeah. that's a big thing because like their neutral does suck right they're not wrong yeah, in yeah they're not wrong it's but, terrible but, but it's they're not better, gonna be the thing that's gonna or, yeah, it's, help it's them. not it's not the highest priority they need to learn the more basic stuff first neutral is this thing that you put together over time and it's made up of all these other things you learn first yeah, yeah they're, they're gonna have to like place. okay so it, it, what is it matcha boost thing if you can't stop somebody from jumping at you and i extend this to like if you can't stop them jumping or dashing at you you can't play neutral with them right yeah it's literally rock paper scissors uh like i mean that is but yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, for example, like, uh, like a waiting opponent gets uh, beat by, like, just, like, just, like, dash forward, like, pressure, just, like, fast movement, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but um, a, uh, a a waiting pa uh, player can beat, like, a poke, with like a whiff punish, counter poke, whatever. And then those counter pokes can be beaten by, you know, just waiting. But, like, um, so, yeah. I think that was the last thing I wanted to add, which is you can ask verbal knowledge checks, essentially, just to figure out how much the person knows or how much they don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's that. On I suppose the way thing. you could state it is... <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I suppose the way that you could say state it is it's not only what they're telling you, but also not what they're not telling you. So, yeah. like, the yeah. way that they're saying the information as well as what information they're telling you. A, a lot of new players come in and they hear all these, like, terms and they're like well i think i kind of understand what that is and so they try to use it but they might mean another thing but in in, in reality they they might mean that they just don't know where to stand like 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 they don't know like how to like block properly and stuff and so like they kind of generalize that into like neutral they might mean something different right yeah that that generalization is, is kind of key to what you guys are talking about and that's where if Asking the asking your your the person coming to you like if they know what they need to work on is great, but if they're giving you general answers, then you kind of have to dive in on your on your own and like see what they're doing wrong, because like again to bring it back to like uh, if a math student comes up to their teacher and they the teacher asks them what do you need help with and they just go oh I need help with math it's like okay god damn it where do I start <laughs> like, uh, one plus like, one again like neutral they are. No, exactly. Do we need to go to audition? Do we need to go to subtraction? It's like, yeah. if if they don't know how to describe their problem to you, that's fine. That is so common and so general. But 
either you have to get down with them in terms of talking back and forth like like uh, Nemtus was talking about earlier I think that's actually a great strategy because it breaks the ice it, it creates a like a it like creates a, rapport it helps establish that student teacher mm -hmm. relationship between the two of you on a, on a more casual yeah. level uh, and I mean, it, 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 let, it might it might let you get to some details but yeah go ahead mm -hmm. No, I just wanted to say because I, I, I mean, you guys already know because you read it in the text chat, but just to say it in a stream is my main goal when I'm teaching someone is that the main priority is to actually just make sure they're having a good time. At the end of the day, it's a game and I don't yeah. want it to feel like homework. And so making sure the atmosphere is as casual as possible, finding other stuff we have in common, uh, using that, that, that stuff we have in common to actually help explain the mechanics and the systems as much as I can. Uh, it just makes it more fun and that's the, that's the point of it, right? Because if they get bored and they feel like learning this game is going to take a long time and it's boring, they're going to give up before they've even gotten to the good stuff. Not yeah, wrong. It's, it's, a, it's the I, journey I, to the top of the mountain, not the mountain itself. Percent. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, I, I accidentally you. interrupted you. What would you say? <laughs> Just said I, I agreed with that. that ah, yeah. Anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so for the how much information part, uh, Nemphasis, you mentioned only giving about one to two pieces of information for them to get, to work on in terms of like uh, things to actually take away from an actual coaching session. You do one on one yeah. with them, and you say, "Okay, these couple of things I'd like to see you work on for next time." Yes. Yeah, so I always kind of open with pointing out that I'm going to give you a ton of information, and you're going to forget 95 percent of it. And don't worry about that. Don't don't be worried about asking me to repeat myself next session. Like I'm not going to get mad about it. I don't expect to remember everything. I'm gonna at the end of the session, I'm going to give you the really important stuff that I want you to practice. We can work on the other stuff later on. Like these are the priorities. Just so they don't feel bad about being overwhelmed. Some some of them are great. They actually take down notes and stuff, and that's great if they're doing that. But some people don't want to do that, and yeah. you know if they don't, that's fine. Right. This is this is the practicable homework versus big concepts part. You have one or two small kernels that represent a big concept that you went over. You may have told them all about how to find their own frame traps and what a frame trap does and everything like that. But for practicable homework, you maybe gave them one or two strings to work with. Yeah, and the priority is finding stuff that's going to be benefit the most with minimal practice for execution. So for a beginner, yeah, one of that's, the that's a that good I way to start off. People, Go ahead. Yeah. Um, for beginners, like one of the most uh, common things I always recommend they learn is actually something as simple as quick rising and back rising. Mm -hmm. uh, because even beginners who don't know about uh, knockdown pressure just innately uh, try to dash in after a knockdown to maintain momentum. Uh, and if you're delay rising, because you don't know about quick rising and back rising, you're going to get pressured uh, unintentionally. But if you quick rise, most of these people, since they don't know their setups yet, you can interrupt those uh, dashing attempts oftentimes. Absolutely. So that's a really it's, simple one. Yeah. That's, that's one, of the, what's one of the things that I put in my beginner guide video. I have the four basic things of anti-airs, punishes, BNBs, and pokes. Like, there's very basic forms of those. And then I have, like, please quick rise. <laughs> and and don't let people dash at you after a throw. Those are like yeah. the, the five, main, the six main a, things. I have a beginner document that I uh, that I was making a guide about, but I didn't actually finish it because that's why my PC died. But uh, it had a whole bunch of really like these are just five things, simple things that you can learn. They're executionally really simple, uh, but they'll they'll give you a lot of mileage. And quick rising and back rising is is in there. V reversals are in there. Again, just input wise, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, knowing what your tick throw button is again like execution wise a jab into a throw doesn't really take a lot of lab time just have to know what your option is there um, little things like this you know and again like if you see that oh I see you always pressuring me like when you jump in on your opponent and they block it uh, you immediately press a medium at this point you can't threaten with a throw what if you jump in with that heavy kick and then press a light and then you can go into your medium or go into a throw like that, that's more beneficial uh, little things like that are actually like really common ones I start with beginners. Just because, again, easy to learn, but uh, a lot of mileage. Yeah, yeah and, obviously and we were talking about Street Fighter Five specifically in these examples, but you know, there's yeah. still such concepts. Those, those, bro, those are... Yeah, it, it transfers. Um, it's mutatable too, right? So you teach them that basic tick throw, and then you can say, okay, next time you see them you can be like all right you know that tick throw we did last time here's how you can vary that to make it more dangerous and you include you start to incorporate the frame traps and things like that and you can build string diversity off of prior knowledge that they've gone through that's the spiral curriculum exactly. thing all over again yeah yeah um uh, too much information for beginners uh 
that's the thing. There's a there's a lot to go through for a beginner. Right. Yeah, but even then, like you don't have to hit it all, and some of them they just might learn on their own. That's why I think these yeah. are like kind of bringing up goals. Like yeah. you mentioned, like the the practical, practicable homework versus the big concepts. Like mm-hmm. it 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 really can be overwhelming if somebody throws like everything on the table at you, um, and it it can either be overwhelming or it'll just be ineffective. And I, either situation is just not for a new training um and even even for somebody that's like you know higher like we 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 want to make sure that the person is uh, that the person who's learning is is going to training room like practicing these these one one to five different things that we're we're teaching them and then trying to apply and when you try to apply this stuff in match, it's it's so hard if you have to think about more than more than five things. Oh um, yeah, you're no, I mean, even yeah. like one or two things. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those things where you're processing not only the concept but also the execution of it. So mm-hmm. it's entirely one of those things where an emphasis is thing of saying, "Here's the concept. Here's what you can practice. Don't worry about doing it now." Don't worry about like the 90% of the stuff you're going to forget because it's the idea that it's rattling around in your brain somewhere so that later on, if I bring it up again, you're going to be like, oh, I've seen that before. Oh, I know what a frame trap is. I've seen that, what that does. You know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, it's also really important just to make sure that to not give too much information, you don't get ahead of yourself and you also don't let them get ahead of them. Because yeah. I know all the time, you know, I have someone come to me and be like, Hey, here's just a replay of mine. What do I need to improve? You tell them, okay, improve your mix-ups. People just keep locking against you forever. And then they're like, okay, got it. And then one week later, they come back. They post another replay. And they're like, what do I need to improve now? And they didn't learn how to improve their mix-up, right? That's still the priority. That's still what they need to work on. And just because they came back to you saying, oh, I know, I know, I'll get to it. Doesn't but did you give them the mix-up? <laughs> yeah, you, you might have to have some specificity there. Um, yeah, on that topic yeah, no, of uh, someone coming back and not having learned the last thing. So yeah. before my PC died, um, I kept notes on every single person I coached so that when I have a follow-up session with them, I can search what we discussed. I, I keep yeah. notes of what I explained to them last time. And I check if they learned the stuff that we discussed in the last session uh, and make sure I'm not just like repeating stuff from you know the previous one again and again. Um, this is also a good indicator because it tells me if this, if this person is actually putting in the, in the effort to learn uh, what's discussed in every session or if we're just going around in circles uh, so that's a really handy thing to have is just having personal notes I, since the PC died I now use uh, uh, the built in uh, little user notes function in Discord to actually just keep a couple <laughs> of uh, basic notes not just on what was discussed but also about that person's personality like do they get uh, tilted very quickly do they get you know frustrated uh, mm. from a couple of matches uh, you know what region they're based in just little things like that like if their connection's unstable like I'm gonna have a note of that just in case yeah. Do you have any notes that just say avoid? Yes, I do actually. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I, I yeah. have notes that literally says do not coach by any means. Oh my god. Yeah, there's there's certain people that trip that sort of thing of like, hmm, yeah. this this isn't going to work. And I think that's the next topic, though I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, good student before... qualities. So we were talking about types of students in this instance. Um, I just was moving on from the previous one because we we did pretty much cover everything there. But if we're talking about individual students, we can talk about negative stuff all day because it's really easy to be negative about the people that we work with. But mm. if we focus on the positives for for what we're what we want to see, uh, these are the some of the traits that we want we like seeing from our students uh, whenever we work with them. Personally, I like the active listening, which is they ever have a conversation with somebody and they just say, "Uh huh, yeah, okay," like. It's not very helpful because you don't know if they actually understand what the hell you're talking about. Active listening is they press you about questions that you're asking or, or about statements that you're making. Similarly, asking questions. If they, they Good questions, bad questions, like the, how, what mix-ups should I learn versus like what do I need to do to improve, stuff like that. And also having manageable f- goals is a huge one. Um, which is comes back to what Jojo was talking about. There is this thing called SMART goals, which we can discuss, 
Uh, I don't ah, yes, I know remember what that's... Yeah, House maybe. brought that up first. Maybe he can introduce it. Oh yeah, yeah he can, he, if he remembers that, then he can bring that up. Yeah, um, I mean, it... I think, I think, I think, or do we want to talk about that, or do we want to get through the list? First? I don't mind, uh, I'll just cover the last four real quick. Good loser, Go obviously, Go Go taking losses on the chin is fine, it is good for them. Uh, Self-driven, if you give them something, they will act on it and morph it into something of their own. They don't need to be given explicit instructions on where to go next. Takes valid criticism. Um, if you tell them something, they don't take it personally. So if you state that, like, you need to block a little bit more, they don't, like, lose their shit over it. And finally, patient. They're gonna have to understand that this is gonna take a while. <laughs> like, a while, a while. Anyways, so, uh, if, if you've got other qualities that you want to provide, or if you want to talk about goals, that'd be a good thing. We can expand on some of these. Sure. I mean, I, I, think, I think a lot of them go into one another, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I in the in the limited amount of time and the limited amount of people that I've met, I, I have noticed not even consistencies but variances. Um, you get some people that just have issues with execution. You have some people that don't understand games logic. You have some people that just don't get the pacing, and then you have some people who do not know how to progress on their own. Like they they know how to do it in training room, but they, they don't know how to apply it in a match. And, or they can't, they, they're not consistent about it, and then they get frustrated. And ultimately, I think, like, the two the two that are probably the biggest quotes here are, are the have matchable goals and the good loser thing. Nobody likes losing. And I, yeah. I get, I get, I get a, it's a true statement that I get a little frustrated when I hear is, like, every, every loss is something to learn from. It's like, yeah, that doesn't help. Like, it's true. Don't it get still me hurts, wrong. man. It is absolutely God- damn true but big yeah. but is that if they are not able to take the law if they're not able to learn from the loss then the loss is actually not helping you know what i mean yeah so having those manageable goals takes the weight off of the winning and losing aspects of these games yeah suddenly you're not you're not getting frustrated that you lost. You're celebrating that you anti aired every time in that match. Yeah. You're celebrating that you hit that meaty twice out of three times. You're celebrating this, that, or the other. And suddenly you don't feel the need to be playing on ranked for four hours straight because mm -hmm. your goal is no longer to hit a certain number. It's to feel like you have a concept down. Like that's that's where we have to kind of redirect or just feel like you're not bad. People will play rank for four hours and then go on a losing streak because they want to end it on a good note, and they just keep getting angrier and angrier and angrier, and they keep losing and losing and losing, and so they never end it on a good note because yeah. their goal is to win or to rank up, and those are terrible goals. Um, yeah, that, honestly, I, that's why like the the new uh, new players I have, I tell them to limit the amount of time they're playing yeah it's a really bad trap to get into yeah i don't know why I but it's not like this is an mmo or something that experience literally levels you up no you need to be actively working to learn and improve well yeah. i mean time what is it it's not gonna set you apart but what is it it's practice makes perfect but it's like perfect practice makes perfect if you're spending most of your time in rank just getting angry at yourself about existing um it's not gonna make you a better player because most of the time you're just gonna come back and dwell on the negative emotions that come with it rather than actually trying to improve i uh, limiting playtime whatever i i would state that they can spend as much time as they want in training mode they just want to chill there and just press buttons it's kind of cathartic to do that in my opinion but um, yeah, I would I wouldn't want to okay. spend have somebody spend like eight hours in ranked. Oh my god. Yeah, I just want to expand on the good loser one because I I put that up there. Now uh, my personal definition of a good loser is someone who when they lose or when they are losing, don't just give up and just sit there and are like I can't do anything. Well, there's nothing I can do. There's literally no fucking answer. I can't do anything. Right. A good loser will happily rematch and mm. try to do the thing that we're failing to do 
Because, like, let's say, like, you, like, try to anti-air, you fuck up, you get, you trade, or you just straight up get counter hit. That feels bad. But if you give up on anti-airing for the rest of that match, you're just going to get jumped on and jumped on and jumped on and jumped on. You have to keep trying. You have to not give up. Even if you fuck it up every time, because that's how you get experience. And that's how you get better. That's how you adjust that thing you were fucking up so that you no longer fuck it up. The only thing, the only counter point i have to that is that it's a bit it's a bit of a simplistic look because i think it overlooks how emotions can dictate your psyche oh, yeah. and so like if if you if you take a loss and there are some people i i'm i'm this way myself if i get in a bad mood and my brain gets stressed out too much i will i i will you know say something or or you know like in game do something i don't mean to do it's something i'm learning to deal with myself but you know, if I ignore that by saying, well, I just need to be a better winner or a better loser, yeah. then but everyone you know, is prone to getting I don't, I don't, I don't, th I don't think, I don't think that, that I think it's better to recognize who you are in that avenue. If you're somebody that can take a loss and, and benefit from it immediately, that's awesome. If you're not, it's good to recognize that, be able to walk away from the situation and do something else just so that you can come back to it and improve yourself. You know well, what I mean? That's a that's a good point. It's about decompressing. Um, yeah. This is why and you have... for different people, it's different avenues. Uh, like, come, to come back to the actual education example with, like, mathematics or whatever, if they give you problems to work on, they don't give you like back to back to back to back chunks of work. You're given moments to like decompress no. and think about the material you just went over and then come back to it later on. Uh, it's the same thing with Street Fighter V. You can be like angry about a loss, but then you can just be like, all right, decompress. The, the difference, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, decompress, wait for a bit, and then come back to it with a more rational head about it and think about what went right and what went wrong. If that makes sense right yeah. but, yeah, but what you need to do to decompress is probably be a little different for anybody oh yeah no the of course trap yeah. with fighting games and uh, compared to like learning something else trap is that in the fighting game you want the rematch because it feels good when you win yeah. you know what i mean if you get extra homework and you need to decompress it's not going to take you long to figure out a way to decompress you know what i mean yeah like people like when you're doing something that's boring and tedious finding ways to decompress yourself is very easy when you're trying to bash your head against something that you feel like you should be getting a reward for it becomes really hard to figure out how to decompress from that yeah it's true it's a double-edged sword there's a good reason there's like good there's good things about the this being a game and teaching you these sorts of mm -hmm. mental skills but it's also a bad thing too, as you said, because it's like you don't want to leave the thing uh, unfinished by like leaving on a loss or what have you. Yeah, I think we, I think we as coaches, it's just something to like be aware of. It's just to try to direct people in a path that avoids them from uh, to use to use the phrase to to avoids pushing them towards chasing the dragon. You know what I mean? Well, like avoid burnout, pushing them general. towards getting the high. Yeah, because that that leads that that path leads to burnout. We have to push them towards the path that is learn, understanding, and and meaningful. And that's that's what that's what those manageable goals do. Is that it creates meaning in every time you play this game. You don't want to feel like you sat down and waste four hours just to lose. Yeah. So. So I think do that's you do like you remember the acronym for Smart Goals, level. Houseman? Off the top of your head. I'm sorry. Do you remember the acronym for uh, SMART goals off the top of your head? How's that? Uh, oh, there's an acronym. I, I'll be yeah, honest, I kind of skimmed the chat, so <laughs> if somebody else wants to bring it up, that's, that's fair ahead. Uh, I have uh, I had it bookmarked because I was using the system for a while. Uh, I'll give okay. you guys the... Uh, oh, I, I so appreciate was, uh, that because I remember some of them. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time uh, bound. That's the uh, acronym, I believe. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I see it in the chat as well. Thank so, you, uh, Red. Uh, so the first one is specific, which means that it's got to be a detailed goal. It's got to be, like like how said, meaningful. It has to mean something, you know? Yeah, you I know, will be silver in two weeks is not specific. It's timely. Yeah, it's not, 
Yeah, it, it's actually no. <laughs> that 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 is specific. Yeah, that's what specific. it is. Oh, that's sorry, an sorry. Goal. What it it is that is that specific, but it might not be attainable. Yes, it's very specific. It's not. It's, it might not be attainable because it's an externalized goal, and what an externalized goal is, it's a goal that can be affected by an outside source. You might just happen to run into players that are better than you. That can happen. There is always going to be someone better than you. So winning is not. Yeah, actually, I think it might just not be specific. No, yeah, it's, it's not specific because if we're aiming like it, the the rank like itself that, doesn't right? tell you anything, right? It's a marker of where you are, but it doesn't tell you anything about your overall skills. So if you are saying, "Well, I I must be this rank by this date," that's not really a good goal. In in terms of a specific goal, it would be like uh, for a specific short term goal, you would state something like, "In the next match, I will anti air my opponent each time he jumps." I will try and aim for like a 75% anti-air rate, or something like that. Or I will oh, incorporate way, an anti-cross of anti-air, something like that. Basically, it needs to be something that you can do right now, right? The reason why getting the silver is not a specific goal is because to get the silver, that means you have to win, which is one thing, but to win means you have to improve, and to improve, you have to learn well, anti-air, it, right? It's like, too nebulous. There's four steps there, where when you say anti-air, it's just... Oh, oh, no, 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 that's 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 short versus long-term goals. No, a specific is something like, um, it's too nebulous in terms of, like, what needs to be done for it to happen, if that makes sense. It can literally be broken down into di two different kinds of goals, either externalized or internalized. An externalized goal is, my goal is to win the match. That's externalized because an external factor can affect the outcome. Mm -hmm. You can run into someone better than you, right? An internalized goal is to like, well, this is an extreme one, but to do your best, right? That's internalized. <laughs> Not very specific, but yeah, all right. Use, right? That's much more achievable, and it only depends on things that you yourself can control. Right. As a, as a side note here, uh, the smart goal system also has a, 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 another system that complements it called literally the goal, which has its own acronym. Oh. Um, and it's kind of like a little expansion to the smart goal system. Um, I was made aware of this because uh, somebody I was coaching, and I want to kind of segue into this real quick because we're talking about good student qualities. And there's a whole bunch of stuff I want to cover, but I don't even know if the uh, later slides will be more relevant for it. But this one is relevant for this one. Um, one of the things I like to do uh, occasionally when I'm coaching is I like to get feedback from the person I've been coaching about, okay, like, how is my coaching helping you? Well, like what kind of like what kind of information does this person prefer processing like is it like videos as it do they like prefer it through text through voice uh when i'm explaining stuff like am i explaining in a way that helps them or is there a better way i can explain it for that individual because i try and fine tune it for the person i'm coaching and uh and i like to get feedback on that one of the persons i was coaching happened to be uh, a professional coach in the corporate sector and he's the one who made me aware about the smart goal system he was like hey like maybe you can apply this into street fighter 5 coaching and so at the time I sat down and I uh, converted this into mm. uh, how I can make this usable for fighting game coaching. And he also made me aware of the goal system and I did all that stuff. Um, and it's great if you want to optimize your time coaching. If, you're, if you've got a day job and you're coaching at night and you're trying to make the most of, uh, of that time, uh, setting aside 30 minutes or one hour for a session and using the system is a really good way to kind of optimize that time. Uh, I have a lot of time right now. And like I said, like over the years, I've actually uh, kind of learn to appreciate just freestyling as much as I like and just kind of going with the flow and letting it happen organically. Uh, so I don't use it as much, but it's definitely a good system, but it, it also comes across very clinical because when you're trying to get goals for this kind of stuff, ends up just kind of like making things kind of like, okay, well, I gave you some, something to work on, like, you know, you can, like, we're done now kind of thing. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, okay, it sets up a, it sets up, the, if you set up a specific thing, like, I want you to work on this for next week. And it's within their skill range because you give them, like, you look at what skills they have and state, okay, well, they know bread and butters. Hey, how about you optimize the bread and butter that you're using to punish uppercuts? Like, show me show me a better punish for that. And you give them a better punish for it, and you you say, okay, I'll come back to you in a week and see what that looks like for you. That, that would be a smart goal as well as, like, a set task that can be useful for some people. Some people love that. Some people hate it. So like some people will will be like just give me a guide, give me a sort of like direction, and I'll figure it out on my own. And other people will be like, please just give me something to work on, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
that's really important to talk about in general. We've kind of brought it up a lot here and there, but every student is different. And right, being a coach, we have that privilege of being one-on-one -on -one with our students. Mm -hmm. So we can really tailor, make the experience to them. Unlike, you know, where teachers have a seminar of a hundred students and they just kind of have to tackle the broad audience, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you just sort of like choose a teaching style that works for 70% of the class and you just sort of shrug and be like, well, it's the best I can do, guys. Have fun. Yeah. yeah. It really gets into like literally everything we've talked about already, right? Like, oh, yeah. It all, it, it all ties together. Time, we talked about the different teaching methods. You know, some of those methods work better with different students. Yeah. 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 It's very true. Um, the next one was analyzing your coaching session, which is comes down to the question of how do we know we had a decent coaching st session or what have you. The, the hallmarks for how I know or how I feel that I've done okay in a teaching session are uh, that I stayed on topic, that I focused on one or two things, uh, that I was calm and professional the whole time. It's tempting to sometimes get annoyed, uh, but I try not to. Uh, I try and clearly explain material and give examples, and I try and cleanly show examples and match. If I can't, like, execute the thing that I want to show them, I feel kind of bad afterwards, because I'm like, I, I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. Nemphis brought this up. Just ask the person you're training how they felt about the session and perform a follow-up. The, fo the follow-up's huge. I, I learned about this relatively recently from um, coursework for IT work which is just come back to them, you know, a day or two later and be like, all right, so how's the material that I gave you? Is the is it all ma sort of making sense? Because you're giving, that's the decompression. You give them one or two days to sort of sleep on it and then come back and like go, okay, I think I, I think it clicks now. You know, give them a day or two so they can sleep it, sleep on it, which helps the brain do that, you know? Yeah, yeah there's there's another benefit to this as well following up is uh is really really nice because um uh it kind of shows you give a shit and like it wasn't just some some random guy you was coaching like uh they they really appreciate the fact that you took the time out of your day to help them but also you remember them enough to like get back in touch and be like hey man so like how's you know those things that we discussed going like did you get a chance to practice yet um and they might have said you know they might say no because like you know been busy with work or school or whatever and like that's fine like you know no rush um you know, let me know how it goes, just to show that, you know, like you're actually, you're actually interested in their progress. Yeah. Though for me, the trainees that I do go back and talk to, they have to hit at least one of those good trainee, you know, uh, mm. points, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. You're, you're not out here trying mode. to make orchid, uh, trying to farm orchids, are you? Yeah, <laughs> it's a, that is a phrase from when I was going through teacher training. Um, orchids are there's they gave this example of dandelions versus orchids. Dandelions are like are, are weeds around here. They they grow anywhere. They, you can you can sprinkle their seeds in between a pair of concrete blocks and it'll just randomly sprout up in like a week or two. But your orchid, you have to adjust the pH of the soil, you have to watch how much sunlight it gets, you have to watch how much fertilizer it gets to make sure it doesn't burn itself out. It's a lot of effort to cultivate these orchids. And so they're like, well, some students are your dandelions, they're going to thrive no matter what, and some students are your orchids, they're going to take a lot more effort. <laughs> now, that's in an environment where I'm, I would be forced to work with the students regardless of whether or not I wanted to or not, because a job is a job. This is all voluntary. We yeah. we don't have to. If you think a student is gonna be a gigantic pain in the ass in future, add a tag that says avoid them and try and put your head, keep your head down so you don't ever have to talk to them again. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, if, uh, uh, when you're asking for help and all the coaches are suspiciously not replying, there might be a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what this means is that if a coach ever got back to you, you're special. <laughs> They're, they're, uh, all they're all special. They're all special. I uh, no, it's, not, it's not special. It's just you weren't a shithead, essentially, and like you have some promise, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you no, met no. the basic bar for human interaction where we don't like <laughs> yeah. inwardly yeah. cringe every time we talk to you. Yeah. 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 Just, just and, to add on to this. And we well. want to teach you more. If we, as a thing, you, you could be, you could be attentive. You could ask questions. You could like whatever. But like if. If you know, if you were just like rude or something, like forget about it. Like, um, but you know, it it really shows that if 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 we keep in touch with you, like 
you gotta not give up because we saw you know we saw you know we saw some promise we saw you know uh you know that eventually we could you know help you out and you could get better because let's let's be honest there's some lost causes yeah yeah um, i mean the, i think houseman mentioned it inside of chat when we were setting up how all these slides and everything but oftentimes coaching in this game will feel like you are doing 50 percent coaching street fighter or therapy. whatever fighting game and the other half is therapy yeah yeah, yeah the, we are half it's, time it's more like 20 percent uh coaching and 80 percent therapy oh yeah Jesus. Uh, and I'm, and I'm fine with it, like, you know, yeah. again, like, because it's such a social thing for me. Like, I'm yeah. okay, like, hearing someone, you know, tell me about whatever they're, they're having problems with. But most yeah. of the time, I like, I realize that this person's problem isn't really about Street Fighter V. Like, yeah. you know, like, it's, it's a core personality issue that I can't fix through a video game. The hardest and probably my favorite part to teach in fighting games is the mentality part. It's yes. so difficult to teach mentality but it's fun <laughs> mm. uh and and it really is true we're like almost therapists here and it gets way too fucking real sometimes uh and there have been some uh there, there's been some trouble in nch before with stuff like that uh but man uh, i guess you can't avoid it because fighting games at their core are one-on-one -on -one, and when you're just with another person just alone you're gonna talk right and yeah. then you're going to get to learn more about them and, you know, not just as who they are as a player, but as a person. And, you know, it, it gets real sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's like because because I, I, I did mention it's like half half teacher, half therapist. But like, I, I don't mean to take the negative connotation of therapist where you just sit yeah. there and listen to the person. No, it's it's part of this, like literally part of what we just went through, like making manageable goals you know small incremental steps in that spiral method these are things that if you start applying them to your own life can make things a lot better for you all around like, it it's kind of shocking how, how well it works outside of just this whole this yeah. whole fighting game realm um yeah. of course you know you don't need to learn anti-airs to get the next job offer but like you know like it really does it really does come down to like managing yourself well and figuring out where your where your limits and where you can expand upon are so like honestly i i it's interesting when i it's interesting the few players that i've talked to that literally just needed to be sat down and told listen you're getting frustrated at this you shouldn't let this get you shouldn't let yourself get to that point this is how you got to that mental state and try to avoid it and do this so that you can Get, put yourself on a better track just for the fighting game mm -hmm. just, just on for related the fighting note, game um, yeah. one of the things I'll, I prefer uh, one of the reasons I prefer voice coaching is that I can uh, very quickly tell if mm. somebody's getting salty or annoyed or frustrated yeah. uh, in text you don't really pick that up so you keep doing what's pissing them off until they blow but like in voice <laughs> you can actually diffuse the situation before it gets to that point because you're realizing that this person's yeah. getting pissed off yeah. so when this set ends I'm gonna be like Hey bro, uh, let's take a quick break. Let's just chat while I have a cigarette. I'm actually just giving them time to calm down. Or well, sometimes mm -hmm. I just want a cigarette. <laughs> de decompressing again, once again. Yeah. There's the there's the mental yeah. decompress and the emotional decompress you're getting there. Yeah, and, and to then be about, honest, because go ahead. So I'll just I I, I wanted to uh, bring this up uh, previously when we're talking about follow ups here, like perform a follow up. Um, uh, I don't know if later on the slide it's going to be a more relevant topic because I really want to talk about the various like count on a stick things I do, but uh, this one's kind of relevant for this one. Uh, with follow-ups, one of the reasons I will actually message someone after a session a few days later is actually because by asking them, hey, so like, how's that stuff going that you're practicing? Because like, we're not, we're not in a vacuum here, right? People play other video games, they've got other responsibilities. Uh, they might not be playing Street Fighter, but just by you following up, they're like, oh shit, like this guy's actually waiting for me to learn that stuff maybe i should like boot up street fight tomorrow and lab this uh yeah. it encourages people to play more yeah and that's the only way you're gonna learn like you gotta like doesn't matter how much we help you if you're not playing the game like it's useless you gotta be playing yeah, yeah or, people are happier or, to do or, stuff or... if there's other people involved with it right and yeah. that's a nice way to get yourself involved with it. hold I them accountable like, i remember just like in school right i never did my homework i'm gonna be real but then if there was a group project or something right i i would put 
my a effort into it right yeah because you're more accountable now like because exactly. someone's gonna be like yo what the hell bro like you didn't do it um, it's like I, i'd be fine with not doing homework and getting a b in the class like, who cares normally but you know i'm not gonna bring someone else down and it feels like you're bringing someone else down when you're involved like nem said yeah you know that feeling that you wasted someone else's time it, it's a bad mm -hmm. feeling yeah yeah um, and, uh, the next topic, in, in, in the, in or this is the sort of the final topic and sort of is or per, more of a personal thing, but, um, for new coaches, it's sort of like, why would you want to coach? Why would you want to learn, like teach people how to play one of these games? And these are some of the things that we came up with, uh, as to why, but well, I'll start with like, uh, Nymphis. Why, why would you want to coach Street Fighter? I didn't want to coach in this. I, I had no intention of coaching. No, oh, that's fair. <laughs> um, I uh, I found the server because I wanted to learn how to improve at uh, Street Fighter V. Uh, I'd been playing since the first strike days, um, but I just I was never like at the level I wanted to be at. And I thought, you know, what, like maybe joining the community will help with that. Uh, so I actually came here, and I was the one getting help from the coaches, and I was playing with people and asking for feedback so I can improve. And uh, uh, at the same time, I noticed that a lot of people were asking the questions that I, I'd asked a week or two weeks or a month before. So because I knew the answers, because I'd been taught about that stuff, I was helping them out as well and helping explain it. So I was asked to be a coach because of how often I was helping others out when I was a uh, silver rank, I think. And um, and I was actually really unsure because I never tried to teach anyone anything before. So I thought I was just going to do a really bad job. So I was telling Vinegar how... I don't know, man, like, you know, I, I'm not really a good player. I'm just silver rank. Like, what can I really offer? And uh, he said something that at the time just blew my mind because I never saw it from that perspective before. He said, well, like, you don't have to be a good player to actually teach someone how to play. And what I think you're doing a good job of is that you're just really good at explaining complicated uh, uh, topics uh, about the game to someone who's brand new. And I was like, all right, well, I'll try it for a week. And if you guys think I'm still doing an OK job, you can keep me on board. And if you think I'm not doing a bad job, I'm, no hard feelings, uh, you know, like you don't have to have me as a coach. And I found that I really enjoyed it. So that first point, teaching helps you learn. That actually I didn't realize was going to happen. But because now I'm more uh, obligated to have an answer when someone asks me something I didn't know as that silver rank player, I was improving and ranking up way faster uh, because like I'm, I'm checking all this stuff. I'm labbing it. I'm verifying it because I don't want to give wrong information helped me play the game way more often uh, and it was hella fun and I realized I enjoyed teaching others play the game uh, more than I actually enjoyed improving myself. <laughs> That's actually yeah. very true. I, I have way more fun teaching than I do actually playing. Um, and also, yeah, I, I'm in the same boat. I, I got into teaching on New Challenger because I ended up on this channel just because I wanted to get better at the game and I found out very quickly I didn't know as much as I thought I did but you know I would consistently respond to people inside of the coaching channel I would consistently try and help people um, and in a desire to not be wrong about things I ended up looking up information and that's what ended up like I've I've written guides for all the characters but that's not because I had some sort of like built-in desire to learn how to play 40 characters in a fighting game I just didn't oh, want to be wrong and also, I didn't want to ever have a situation where somebody would be like, uh, do you have, do you know how to play Ed? And I'll be like, no, of course I don't. Why? <laughs> of course, who would want to play that character? No, I wanted to have answers for these people. I feel personally attacked. I find it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, sure. I, I have a newfound respect for Ed after learning how he works. So no worries. It, it, it gave me a much more underst deeper understanding of the game and gave me a bunch of new goals to approach. So, and that, that to me has been the best, the most uh, rewarding part of all of this is that I got to turn a professional skill set for something I did in real life into something um, that I can apply to one of the hobbies I enjoy doing. Does anybody else want to share? Dude, I'm um, weird with my thing. Honestly, well, like, so it's mostly the first and third point for me, right? It, it does help me learn. And it's not just in the oh here are thing right we, we talked about already here how it helps you learn because here are things i wouldn't have bothered to really learn right i wasn't too motivated to to work on like learning these other characters but because of coaching now i have a reason to it's also like there are some things that you might have more vague ideas about 
but then when you have to actually explain it, you have to sit there and think about it more in depth than you've thought about it before to be able to explain it. And that just helps your understanding in general on to topics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, just fun for me. Right. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you just like to body people. <laughs> that I, I mean, <laughs> nobody's saying it, but we're all thinking it, right? It's fun to it's fun to identify where people are going wrong in a game, right? When I'm critiquing replays and stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. it's kind of the same enjoyment I get yeah. when playing the game, where it's fun to identify what my opponent's doing and how they could be, uh, how how I could abuse that or take advantage of that, as well as fun for me myself to change up what I'm doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So I guess I'll go for my reason. Well, I uh, I wanted to help uh, some of my friends get better at fighting games. But I didn't know how. Uh, and it was just impossible to explain concepts. I literally did not know how to put things into words. So I figured if i just get some practice first on some people that uh i might fuck up teaching but uh, you know <laughs> uh, at least i get some practice i could get good at helping my friends right and so i got an nch i did some learning myself here and eventually i just got to the point where i could just consistently teach people how to how the game actually works like how to improve like how to reach your goals that sort of stuff and so basically, I just joined to get practice on coaching. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so that actually, that I think that's the last one. So we're actually on uh, chat questions and discussion. Nymph had some interesting points that he was going to bring up. <laughs> Bottom text. <laughs> Bottom text, yeah. <laughs> I know memes. I, I'm, I'm hip and with it, despite probably being a boomer at this point. All right, so yeah, we, we do have time for some chat questions. So if you do want to ask a coaching-related question, in fact, we already have one from Baseball Super in the chat who asks, who are the majority of players that ask for coaching? Like dudes that are silver and gold or like diamonds or are there like diamonds that ask for it? Definitely the lower rank players. Generally. Yes, the majority are lower rank players. Rookie, bronze, silver. Um, but in keep general. in mind, you will get so occasionally. I've been asked questions from Diamond players because yeah. there are still moments where it, they want... the. It's really just a per capita issue where there's like a lot of rookie and bronze players and there aren't right. that many Diamond players, comparatively speaking. Well, yes, of course. Uh, though we do get the occasional Platinum Diamond or so player in the coaching chat. Yeah. Uh, but you can't really... Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, there's less diamond players than there are bronze players, but it's also new challenger. <laughs> it's it's a community specifically made for newer players. Uh, and so we're going to have way more newer players than experienced. Yeah, yeah another one of the other that hard to get to diamond and such high ranks without already having a skill set and learning on your own right exactly oh, you, you, you'd, exactly. Be you'd be surprised you'd be surprised we we get less questions from high rank players because at that point like uh, most people have uh if they've got to diamond most i say most they're not all uh they kind of know how to analyze their own stuff and understand what their problem is and what they need to fix um so it's the lower rank players who usually like haven't learned how to fish for themselves yet so we have to teach them uh, where they're going wrong to save them time and also teach them how they can learn themselves for, for the mm -hmm. future. But once you get to diamond rank, uh, the main stuff we're doing when we're coaching people who are like diamond ranks and platinum ranks is we're basically just being that person that gives uh, an outsider's perspective for them. And you know, like, oh, I didn't think of that. That's actually a good point. Those kind of things. But we're not going to blow their minds with anything that they hadn't found out about before. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you know, you'd be surprised as to what kind yeah. of questions or requests you get from you know apparently much more experienced players uh, i i i've had to teach a diamond a diamond urian player how to practice with punishing that was an experience for sure <laughs> um i wasn't expecting that but you know it happens um let's see we have another question here in the chat from raithan you mentioned wanting active listeners that ask questions personally i tend to try to dissect what coaches are saying a lot more uh, are a lot to make sure I understand 100%, and this has received mixed responses. 
Is there a limit to how much questioning is too much for each of you personally? Not Depends for me personally. On the relevance. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That, that, that was it. Not for me personally. I'm totally <laughs> with it. Like, I tell them, like, dude, like, if there's anything I'm saying that, like, maybe I use a term that you're not familiar with, just cut me off during my long ass speech and just be like, hey, what does that mean? And yeah. I'll go into that. Yeah. So, so especially when I do like brand new player like coaching sessions, which can take a long time because most of it is like terminology because you want to be able to communicate. You want to, you know, uh, you want to give all these like concepts names so that you can be like, hey, that's that thing we talked about and point at it later. Right. And so like it takes like a long time to get through like a lot of terminology and so these new player coaching sessions take a long time but during any of that time i tell them if you've had enough to for today shut me the fuck up or if you have any questions stop me in my tracks i will mm -hmm. shut up and you can ask your question and we can just stay on that question for a while and then move on i i but honestly I i'm in the same boat as rethan i i don't uh, i'm sorry i'm gonna say the in the same boat as nemphis I don't actually mind answering questions over and over and over again. Uh, what I can't stand is when people will outright refute me or will <laughs> decide to... <laughs> yeah, like I've had people say, like, no, it doesn't work that way. I'm like, why did you ask? <laughs> like, uh, I gotta give up. <laughs> um, so outright refuting or the non-active listener when they respond with just, uh-huh, yeah, okay. because. Uh, I don't know whether or not any of it's actually something that they're understanding at that point. With with those non-active listeners, this is why like I like to I like to say okay, so just to make sure we're on the same page, I'll ask. Uh, can you repeat what I explained? Because I just want to like I I want to make sure that I was explaining it correctly. And if it doesn't align with what I actually said, uh, maybe I just didn't explain it well enough. So like I'll I'll go into the parts that they kind of missed or they kind of like uh, misunderstood. Uh, or if they're just like, uh, then I know that it was just going through one ear and out the other, which is fine. Like, you know, that probably means I was just talking too much and I'll keep it shorter. Yeah. Mm. To, For to me, it's just, there's the... some questions I don't want to answer. Right? Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to teach people stuff that's in the tutorial. Like, that's, yeah. that's just too much work for me. Just go do the tutorial. But then some people will just be persistent about it. They'll be like, what? This is your job. It's like, no, not my job. I'm volunteering. <laughs> it's not a job. <laughs> For volunteers but uh oh. yeah well, it, it depends on finding game you might have a very privileged training mode or, or uh you know uh tutorial <laughs> but to be honest yeah. i don't think there's any good i mean maybe eunice i don't think there's any good uh, good i've heard I skull girls and, and, and gg and uh, guilty gear coach i coach tekken tekken literally doesn't have tutorial for those who Tek yeah tekken's the worst <laughs> no, no doubt literally about it. zero tekken, tutorial there's no option tekken. not like the bad there's none and like, Even... I'll link them a video that will explain all the tutorial type stuff, right? And it's a long video because it's a it's a full tutorial. Yeah. But the Even, point even is, the point is, I don't want to explain it. And yeah. me explaining it would be the same exact content there, except without the video representation. Yeah. And explained worse. Right? Like, I, I, I literally have like a written version of the rundown I give new players. And in the in the in the section for frame data, instead of typing out what I said, I'll just like to Brian that's frame data video because it's literally what I say. <laughs> like, just watch this. <laughs> so yeah, it depends. But to, to, to like a... to to Sorry. wrap up on the on the question about like, are there too many questions? No, but make sure that the questions are relevant. Yes. Like sometimes I get I, I've gotten one or two students who are just like so all over the place. Like they'll start talking about a different character that's not even on the skipping screen. Skipping ahead, especially skipping like, yeah. ahead, that's and it, and that's cool. I'm I'm really I'm glad that you're excited about yes. it. But if you can't focus on the immediate problems, that's gonna that's gonna display itself in a match. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen, and you're not gonna be able to execute on what we applied. And then what happens is that that energy that was positive will eventually turn sour. So yeah. when I'm coaching you, and it's it's going to vary based on the student, but if I find that you're getting off topic a bit too much, I might just be a little stern and be like, hey, listen, we got to focus on this one thing right now because this is what's important. Mm -hmm. um, but it entirely, it's all about relevancy. Like, always feel free to ask a question, but if you're, but if you're going like way too either ahead, going ahead is, is, is a little, is not terrible, but it's also not beneficial. But going completely off topic is like, is detrimental, I would say. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm personally okay with it because uh, using the two examples here, right? Like if they're going ahead of themselves, mm -hmm. uh, it could be that it's just a part of the uh, the game that they're kind of excited about. So I'll, yeah. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll answer the question, but I'll say that, okay, but like, you're not going to need this for, for the rank you're in. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I'll explain it to them because they're probably something they're interested in. If it's about a different character, uh, they might be asking because like their best friend who they play offline with happens to be a Karen player and they kind of want to get some even though I'm not playing Karen and we're not talking about Karen he might want some like little Karen counter tech right and again like it's something that excites him like he wants to get like a taught by a coach about how to beat his friend uh, you know offline sometime so I'll answer it you're, like, you're right like, you're right time. yeah yeah I, I do kind of stress like what they're getting themselves into when they go into a coaching session with me it's like this is literally a rundown of the basics and mechanics of the game and all and the things that you need to get started to like you know uh, you know improve and basically just start playing the game uh, I'm, and... I'm on i think i'm a bit more on emphasis side but i think i think the thing i was talking about was more extreme cases like cases where the person's just all over the place and i'm just trying to focus them a bit more yeah um, right. but you're you're not wrong i think you do have to keep that casual aspect because again this is a we're volunteering and they're also volunteering this is not a life skill we're teaching exactly people. <laughs> yes yeah. yes and no um uh, so do you I guys mean, is it um... so skella master has a new has a question for do you guys believe that major companies such as capcom need to work more on sponsoring things like nch to further grow the community or do you believe that enough is being done it'd be nice <laughs> it wouldn't hurt it wouldn't hurt, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt. hurt. Um, i don't yeah. know how a company can get involved with this and it Come feels on. like like I don't know how a company can get involved with this without completely ballsing it up. Because well, we, well, that's the thing. NCH uh, is also just not like a Street Fighter thing. It's like fighting games thing. You know, it, it can't just be like Capcom. You know, get involved through whatever. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be about Capcom sponsoring NCH specifically, right? Just can they do more to help the community? They like retweet oh, the Discord link or something like. I mean, yeah. has that yeah, happened? I mean, it's fun. I, I don't think. Oh, yeah, with like, yeah, it, it's happened. And like, say Jam is shout out. Like, I mean, say Jam is obviously not affiliated with. He's not working on their Capcom, you know, specifically. But, uh, you know, he, he has. He, well, he has shouted NCH out several times. So we get like some people, you know, some actual you know popular oh, about specifically growing nch or is this a question about growing the fighting game community if capcom needs to do more oh well, well, just, just growing NCH. NCH. Well, i assume nch I, I i'm, I'm okay. assuming just but growing the fighting game in general yeah it'd be nice if capcom started like being like yo by the way all these little tiny communities that are based off of like the larger like capcom street fighter community look at all these places you can go right and like spread some love that'd be nice but you know yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm of the sorry. opinion that ever since Capcom Pro Talk and things like that with Mike Ross, I can't be convinced that Capcom specifically would be in a position where they would be able to have something that's like a community outreach like that without making serious mistakes. So I can trust them to do stuff like retweeting streams or uh, yeah. giving us shout outs. That sounds pretty good, but like I wouldn't want something formal from them because then that probably dips too far into the whole turning this from a hobby into a job type thing yeah that's yeah this, another big thing about this, that is honestly this has how... to stay free it has to stay free because with how small and niche the fighting game community is you cannot afford to lose player retention essentially and us being here uh, volunteering helping people learn these games is basically helping the community stay alive yeah because otherwise well i mean we all know how hard fighting games are so if there's no one there to help you out teach you and you know help you figure stuff out you're just gonna give up and drop the game because fuck this <laughs> well i mean uh, you've seen what like paid commentators and things like that look like for street fighter 5 um, it's not a pretty sight because you can tell if these yeah. people aren't authentic and if they are paid shills it, it just doesn't work <laughs> out well at all um, uh, for me I just feel like it's a thing where they can definitely do more 
but I don't think they can do more in a way that would profit them. So in any way that would be reasonable for them to do type thing. Yeah, yeah that's specifically it, especially because like we're talking about coaching specifically. Like Capcom has sponsored a lot of like basic guide videos, like with the newer characters, they show what each button looks like and they give a rough example of what the character plays like and stuff like that. Yeah. And those are actually decent yeah. reference tools. When, when it comes to coaching, terms... it probably wouldn't be Capcom that sponsors would be like a team or something. Yeah, exactly. Like because of its one-on-one -on -one nature, it'd be I think it'd be difficult for Capcom to supply that. Yeah. Um like I mean Christ, you don't even see the the only coaches that are sponsored by in major league like sports are ones for professional teams. Yeah. So this coaching aspect, you can even apply it to the outside world where you know it's it's not on the NBA to finance you know, little league, and I don't mean to say little league, but you know, local. It's not. It's not them to sponsor local coaches. It's hey. just finance. It's not financially reasonable. If Red um, Bull wants to sponsor us and make us drink Red Bull while we're coaching, I'm, I'm uh, down. Uh, I, I will uh, gladly uh, sacrifice my uh, kidneys for the for the thing. Uh, we got a we got a good question. Can we go on to that one? Yeah, sure. What spread do you suggest for players to play when trying to improve between training mode, lobbies, casuals, ranked, etc.? Ah. So, um, if if people want to stay on a particular routine, right? Let's say, you know, you've got a day job, you've got a family, you've got kids and stuff, right? So you don't have a lot of time to practice. I always tell people, like, if you're cutting into hours, um, spend uh, usually, like, this is flexible, but, like, as a baseline, I'll say spend 10 minutes uh, practicing the stuff and warming up uh, that, you know, we discussed in our last session, right? Like, maybe you're labbing a combo or whatever. Uh, so 10 minutes in that. Then jump into ranked and uh, spend... Uh, 20 minutes playing those rank matches and mm -hmm. after those 20 minutes uh spend 10 minutes uh picking out key matches that you uh you really didn't know what you could have done and watch those replays and uh then go back into training mode lab that stuff and then just loop it around and so you mm -hmm. can make this these hour segments into if you're having a four hour session just do that for four hours uh that's my yeah. personal suggestion i tell yeah. people that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah um, well specifically when playing against opponents Obviously, this is an option for anyone, for everyone, but the best thing you can do over ranked would be long sets against yes. a friend that's a similar skill level. Hopefully multiple mm -hmm. friends, you can get lots of different matchups at different times, but mm -hmm. per set, just one friend, mm -hmm. same skill level. It's more fun. Definitely. And just having a long set really changes the dynamic of what you can learn, what you can practice, and how well you can do so. That was a huge help for me, actually. Uh, speaking about how coaching helped us improve at the game faster, because we had to know what we're talking about when we get asked the question. Uh, the other big factor in me improving in Street Fighter V faster was actually, I happened to have, meet someone on NCH who was uh, someone of my skill level, and we became friendly rivals. Uh, and they were an Alex main. And boy, do I know the Alex matchup after all the sessions we played. And it was great, because it was a back and forth. One week, I'm winning most of the sets. He goes and labs what you know what's costing him those matches. Uh, next week, he's winning most of the sets. I have to go back to training mode, figure out how I need to adjust my strategy. So I really, we would basically find holes in each other's game plans. And then the next week, that person's filled that up. And it's just making us better players overall. So if you can find like a rival around your skill level around that, it's great for improving really quickly. And even better, if you can happen to have a coach watching your guys long session while you're yeah. playing yeah. in the back. Well, that shit's hype as fuck. <laughs> like, so... so I'm on the 50-50 train. 50% 50 of the time you spend playing should be practice, and the other should be implementation. And like Nem said, it should be alternating. So, you know, a little bit of this, then that, then go back to that, and go do this, right? Um, however, uh, I do prefer long sets over short ones. You get to learn more. Uh, so, lobbies over casuals and ranked. However, the fact that, like, you're trying to differentiate casuals and ranked means that maybe you care about those points, which you know you shouldn't. <laughs> well, in, in this fact, case, yeah, like, Ethan probably doesn't play, care right? about those points too much. He he just he's making the distinction between those two because um, I would say out of those three, I would put training mode above lobbies, above ranked, uh, and then those are far and away above yeah. casuals because casuals yeah. Yeah. will never give you a good feeling after you're done yeah. playing it. Uh, you'll either yeah. play against people who are playing off characters that don't know what the hell they're doing, or you will play against people who are Smurfs who will just utterly like destroy me. you. None of yeah. it will make any sense. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, so 50 50 training room and lobbies. That's it. So that's <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I stay most thing. of the time. Uh, it's good. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah, for the ranked and casual thing, I think a lot of people have this misconception where it's like, ranked is where everyone's tryharding, and this is where I need to test my skills and see how good I am rather than improve, where casual is where I need to go to practice. And it just doesn't work out that way, right? So really, yeah. it should be that ranked is where you go to practice and improve, and tournaments are where you try hard and test your skills. Even yeah. if it's online tournaments or anything, but yeah, that's how that dynamic needs to be. Casuals are for having fun and being casual. It's not for, not for practice. One more element of the uh, the whole routine is there's something you should be doing um, when you're not in game, and that's like you know, like when you're not dwabbing, when you're not playing your matches, when you're not analyzing replays. Uh, if you're not at home and you you know, like you're not in your console or your PC, uh, watch YouTube videos or whatever. Like watch matches. Like get in information so you actually have something to uh, practice or or think about when you're actually playing the game. Um, yeah, watching watch high game. level, yeah, watching high also level players, up with and guide. Yeah. Oh, a lot of research is actually good to do too. Like some, you can get a lot of information without actually playing the game. Looking up yeah. Twitter posts, seeing research that other players have done. You don't always have to do the footwork yourself to find that new killer mix-up. You can go look at some, and see what other people are doing. It you may seem like a oh no. Ask questions on NCH. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, but you don't so have to limit it to there. You can ask fun. questions in people's streams too, or you can yeah. ask, you know, or you can go to Twitter and check out, you know, mix-ups that people post on their Twitter wall and stuff like that. High Fight's a great resource for that sort of thing. And it's not yeah. only for something that you can do for yourself for your own character, but also be like, that's an Other interesting yeah. thing that I see for that character. I don't ever want to get hit by that. Yeah. You know. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're doing that research, by the way, um, let's say like you're watching a high level player, you know, like a known professional player playing your character and they do something that you never do, like they use a string or a combo that you never use, right? So this is how you can combine doing your own research with uh, being out of your depth and asking the coaches, right? You can take that moment and go into the coaching channel and say, hey, I saw so-and-so do this. I never use this. Like, what's the benefit of doing this instead of the thing I, I currently do? And we can break that down for you, and now you understand when you should be using that second string if you want to learn it, if it's relevant for you, or why you should stick to using a resistance string. I learned frame traps because I saw one person that I fought against in Platinum do that string, and I said, what? Why did he do that? Why is he doing that? And then I figured it out pretty quickly afterwards. But I had to, like, see it in a match before realizing what it was and how to implement it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed in chat, Rethan said, uh, finds a lot of players who have ranked anxiety. Yes. They go, they go to casual because of that. I hope what I said earlier kind of helps with that a lot, where the problem is that ranked is where they're treating as testing their skills, and that's why they have anxiety. They don't want to do mentality. things that specifically make them worse, which would be learning new things that they're not good at yet. Yeah. But, you know, if you change what you think about the environment to, this is where I practice, and you replace the testing your skills environment with tournaments or with money matches or with anything else that you can put more value on testing your skills into yeah. that helps a lot with that ranked anxiety is a really common thing and like i mm -hmm. i struggled from it a lot myself like when i was ranking up i would only play casuals until i could attain a 90 percent win rate in my last 100 casual matches Ooh. uh and then i would jump into rank so like this is why you don't play casuals you will come across people like me who have a 90 percent casual win rate and we'll just wipe the floor with you. But if you were just playing ranked, someone like me is not going to be your problem for long. Because if I beat you, I'm going to get some points, I'm going to rank up, and you don't match with me anymore. But if you're in casuals, we're just going to keep bumping into each other. Yeah, Chun, it's way better Chun Li thing. Forever, I think, is a good example of that. I think something close to 50,000 casual games. Mm. Like a, that, a silver level uh, Chun player in, that... Um, has 50,000 ranked game, had 50,000 casual games, uh, and only plays casual. It's like diamond level, and yeah. we'll just we'll mop the floor with you. Which is why rank isn't really a good, you know, way to. Yeah, you know, it's another reason that it's not an indicator of skill. Um, it's, it's a good way to start finding more people at your skill level, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, I of think. course. Of course. Like, if you're genuinely bronze, you're gonna be matched up against bronze players, right? Right, right. right. And that's what I mean. It, it's, part, but like, it, it's it's one of these it's one of these like non inverse qualities where it's yeah. like if you are diamond if you are diamond level skill, you will reach diamond level. But that does not mean that everybody in diamond is only diamond level skill. You yeah, if you I mean? can't get there, you're definitely not diamond. But if you can get there, you still might not be diamond, right? Yeah. One of the no, reasons I recommend nah. ranked okay. is just because yeah. it forces you to adapt quickly. Like when you're in battle lounge, yeah. and I still think battle lounge is great, by the way. But like, it's it's a whole different thing. Like, there's a lot of people who who I coach who are actually way above their skill level for the rank they're in because they only mm. play a battle lounge with me. And I yeah. I'm, I try and encourage them to play rank, but like, no, nah, like it tilts me so and so. Like all these different reasons, right? That no, the classic reasons why a lot of people don't want to play ranked. It's like I don't, I don't want to come across a laggy opponent, and like it just makes me even angrier when I lose points and they were lagging. Yeah. Um, so these guys don't touch that, but like they don't learn the essential skill of adapting quickly in a first to two scenario. Yeah. yeah, and that's really important, especially. I mean, if let's let's be real, if your goal, uh, if your overall goal in playing these fighting games, and you have to ask your students at some point this, like if your goal is just to beat their friends, then fine. All right, fine. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? That's fine. that's fine. That's totally fine. But if you're like, if your students like, I eventually want to go to a tournament and like do decently, they're going to have to get over that hurdle at some point. And ranked is a really good representation of that because you don't know what you're going to come across. Mm -hmm. That's also a great question to ask people you're coaching about. Is what is their goal in a game? Why, like, yeah. why are they playing? What do they want to achieve? Like, are they planning to win Evo? Do they just want to have some fun? Like, what are they doing? So when yeah, they get yeah. frustrated, if they just said, you know, like they just want to learn some basics and have some fun you can say like, hey man like you know like you're not you're not planning to win either this year right like it's there's no rush like if it takes you three weeks and it took the other guy one week to learn that combo it's not a race you're okay like you're not here to win tournaments yeah, yeah. i think a big point to go along with that is not everyone's trying to learn at all right don't mm -hmm. try to teach people who don't want to learn make yes. sure that they're an actual student like if you don't mm -hmm. know ask them i learned that the hey hard would way. you I was want some advice sometimes. right yeah and so that's, and that's cool again but it's just it's better for it's better for the coaches to know that as well as the students so that you're on the same page yeah mm -hmm. uh so skelomancer had uh master had a uh, point what spread do you suggest between watching pros and watching uh people in in the league above yours in terms of replay analysis mm. um i don't I, like watching people mm. above me personally but no, i don't let you guys either. elaborate yeah, I, I don't uh, like it either, just because it's, you're getting kind of hyper-specific. It's like, um, I forget who, who suggested it, but the, somebody wanted to do, to help new players, they wanted to do like a road to rank. And it's like, the problem with that is A, it overemphasizes the value of ranks, and B, it, like, when you're, watching the pros is great, because usually the pros are playing at a level where they're looking for they're looking at every option available whereas if you're just watching the person the rank above you you might find a trick that they have that's helping them in this one scenario and it's like kind of carrying them a bit but you also might catch on to some of their bad habits exactly so like it's it's a double-edged sword in that regard um the pros on the other hand I'm going to say 95% of them, because there are 5% of professionals who I'll admit just kind of get away with BS, but 95% of professional players have like a diamond grade game plan mm -hmm. where it's like they are only losing because of one or two guesses and then things snowballs, you know what I mean? But they're still playing overall very well and they're playing with a really different mindset and that's yep. good to analyze. Yeah, I Pretty start, much, I, I start I agree with that. Yeah. I start with from a baseline of like here's a, a a set of things that you can do to play solidly and then you work outside that box and watching a pro player can give you an idea of how to play solidly because most of them they'll lose bits and pieces in terms of health here and there from bad guesses or what have you but they'll overall win most of their matches because what they're doing is going to be relatively solid. They're not going to do anything that's super punishable. They're not going to do anything that puts them at a nasty disadvantage. Nothing weird like that. Um, but there's things that they'll do that sometimes will be so far beyond 
uh, the comprehension or the or the skill level of like where you're playing from that it won't even be useful at all. I think a good ex I think a good example of that I saw was Brian F talked about a very specific Balrog setup where you can in the corner if he throw forward throws you he can dash forward and do a delayed jab to hit a delay tech and that is yeah. so ultra very specific to that character that situation that it doesn't really track and doesn't make a lot of sense to very a lot of low level players yeah yeah so that's, that's fair thing for... that's fair i think you have to have i think if you're gonna watch those professional i, I i'm not saying to try to copy them i'm saying to get some ideas from them and if um, it's not working in your game plan maybe ask your own coach and be like hey i saw this guy do this why is he doing that and why is it not working for me yeah um speaking of watching those high level replays one of the things i really like to do is uh, actually uh take one session with someone where like this is someone we've had multiple sessions with before so it's not like the first session but i will sit down with them and watch high level replays together with them of like let's say like a top cami player mm -hmm. like doing cami yeah. things and this person's learning cami and i explain to them frame by frame during that match why each player is doing what they do and what they're looking for and all these little things and it just kind of blows their mind because like wow like this is what they're thinking about and this is why he's spacing himself right here and it helps yeah. them understand all these little things that he's been watching because he saw that stuff and he was imitating it but he didn't understand why like the classic example which i'm sure you guys all see when you're when you're coaching beginners people walking back and forth in neutral but having no idea why they're walking back and forth. <laughs> Yeah. They like so. doing that waggle, yeah. man. It's good times. That is the most true thing ever. You, uh, new players will watch pros and they'll be like, yeah, I love this. And they like pick up habits from watching. And so like they know how to move, but they don't know why they're doing it. And, and they just end up walking into shit. But, it, but, it's, but I'd say it's okay to notice those habits. Yeah. It's just, again, you need to be able to question them as well. Yeah. Um, and, and you if need you somebody know, to help you mold the answer, and that's exactly yeah, that's where we come in. Exactly. So there is. I'm on uh, a little bit different boat, honestly. Uh, well, I, I agree. You should never actually watch people who are right above you in rank, right? Like if you're bronze, you should not watch silver people. That's not going to help no. you. Yeah. No. But I say you can watch pro players for all the reasons we talked before. Those are the top level players. But then you can also watch high level players, right? Not the Tippity oh yeah head. sorry the i was people. using that phrase wrong you're i agree with you yeah. i agree with that too well yeah yeah because yeah. the point is that the top players have all these crazy nuanced situations and mind games going on that you're not going to be able to understand why they're doing something it just way past you but mm -hmm. then when you watch a high level high level gameplay you can that stuff is lacking long story short yeah. so everything is much more digestible and you can really see what's going on. You can yeah. learn quite a bit from diamond games and stuff like that if you're like in silver and gold. Yeah, you can. yeah, I think yeah. It's yeah. So, uh, I, I would start looking at like maybe high platinum, diamond, maybe yeah. higher than that for like, for like re replays. I wouldn't pick up a lot of habits from your average silver or gold no. replays because no. some of those, as someone mentioned, like you're just going to see a, a, a grip of gimmicks or match will come down to some sort of really awkward guesses that never should have been made in the first place. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and at the same time, I think it's not, it's not something that was asked in the question, but it's pertinent. Um, use those match watchings as a way to decompress, if anything. It's yeah. not like what you should formulate your training routine around. It, it's a way for you to continue like enjoying the game while also Outside decompressing, of the game. yeah, yeah, it, it, but I wouldn't use it as like, you know, your 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 holy bible or something like yeah. that. It's much better to go into training mode, talk with somebody one on one, and come up with and formulate your own game plan, and then and then like add on to it than it is to skip right ahead to ultra grandmaster levels of gameplay. Speaking yeah. of decompressing, by the way, like uh, uh, talking about the whole routine of uh, going to training mode, warm up play matches whether it's battle lounge ranked whatever your preference is uh, and mm -hmm. then watching those replays if during that battle lounge or that ranked uh, uh session you're getting tilted stop early watch replays so you can calm down while you're analyzing stuff or better yet because you're so pissed off you're probably not even going to be paying attention to what's happening in the replay go yeah. make yourself a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever you like to drink you know have yeah. a cigarette i don't know whatever you do right go walk the dog 
come back, then watch the replay of that thing that pissed you off. Because what's going to happen is when you watch that replay, you're going to get hella tilted just watching the scenario play out again. Yeah, but, just watch the replays the day after, essentially. Yeah, yeah, so give it time, but still watch that session. Like, what got you tilted? What was that person doing that was pissing you off? You don't have to fix everything that went wrong in that match. What was the main thing that was costing you damage? Like, what was hitting you? What got you killed the most? Just for working on one thing. You might not win that matchup next time, but you're not going to play as badly if you fix that one thing and then fix another thing next time and so on and so forth. You're not trying to fix everything at once. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough, in a tournament setting, though, I actually tell people to do the opposite. <laughs> uh, just because, like, you need to untilt super quick. And usually yeah. the yeah, best way to try and do that, if it's possible, is to think about what actually happened and then just be like, okay. Well, well, the best well, I, have to, uh, I believe I've seen people about. say, I think this was the Corey, th Corey Gaming thing, he said, if you're at a tournament and somebody hits you with something, after the match, immediately ask them and say, hey, what was that? That's one of the <laughs> biggest problems with like the ranked system inside of Street Fighter V is that you don't get the opportunity to send a message afterwards, usually, to say, what was that? <laughs> Well, how did you hit well, me with that? Well, they were the kind of messages you receive for playing ranked. Oh, right, yeah. so there's like, that, like <laughs> maybe 2% of the time you'll get a what was that, and the 98% of the time it's a racial slur, but whatever. I mean, we're yeah. trying here. Yeah, that, that's also a big reason, right? We talked earlier how the best way to practice is usually long sets against a friend, right? Yeah. So specifically, a friend is better than just a battle lounge opponent because mm. you can talk. Mm. And um, you keep playing them again next week. Oh. Like alternatively that. uh and it look I'm, I'm sure most of you most of the guys in the chat have this but just as a putting this out there right get a fucking microphone right so that when you play <laughs> battle lounge you can actually voice chat with people because it's really nice that you can just especially new challenge you're like let me know if you guys play with someone and you ask them how do i deal with that and they're literally not telling you because like they don't want you to know because like they want to win because like that's what we're about on the server yeah, I, I don't think I've run into a single person like that. Most of them will tell you with pride. Yes. Oh, I was plus there. They are there. happy to tell you how to kick the shit out of them, right? Like, go into voice chat, play Battle Lounge with people on your Challenger or wherever you like to play with, right? As long as you can communicate while you're playing. It could even be text chat. Uh, you know, the, the lobby's channel is fine for that as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. But actually ask, like, just be like, dude, like, man, I am getting bodied by this whole blah, blah, blah yeah. move, right? Like, how do I deal yeah. with this? And see what they say. Nobody's gonna be like, oh no, it's a secret. I, you know, like, can't tell. <laughs> you know, sometimes they suck though, and they actually don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, if they don't know, then you can ask the coaches. You can just ping coaches and be like, guys, like, I'm this so and so is happening. What's the best solutions? But like, most of the time, that person playing that character is more than happy to tell you how to body them. Yep. And to tie it together on this topic, uh, is a lesson as old as time that I learned back when I was still playing MOBAs. If you want to get good at any sport, you have to do three things. You have to play it, duh. You have to watch it, and you have to talk about it. Yep. Yeah. No, you have to yeah, make it because no one person's gonna have all the answers. Yeah. Not even your coach. Yeah. Like, we're gonna try the best we can. Yeah. But, like, we're to gonna be honest. Try. Well, but, you guys yeah. call your co yourself coaches, and you don't know literally everything. So... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we did have a question up here. I think we missed from Camp Chromatic says it's awesome this is all volunteered but have you guys considered a patreon Rathan answered back with like some of us have individual like patrons or coffees but there's no server patreon or anything but if, we get, if we get sent money on the server so we uh there were times where when we're holding tournaments and stuff right like uh we were getting donations and we still uh i think you can still donate to nch however uh, whatever money we get, because we have no overhead, like the, the bots on the channel don't cost anything, nothing costs yeah. anything. We don't have any expenses. Yeah. We donate no that accounts. money to charity pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah. But Which also means you can just problem. donate to charity yourself. Yeah, yeah. you can donate to There's charity. There's a roundabout way to do that. But if you really love a coach, some of us do individually have like a coffee or a Patreon or like a PayPal probably. I don't know what anyone has. But... Yeah, and to emphasize, uh, you giving a coach money is not gonna change how they coach you. No, like, not we at don't all. do paid coaching. Like, you don't get a special privilege or nothing. If you mm -hmm. want to show your appreciation, you can, but don't do it because you think it's gonna get you something. Well, I mean, speak for yourself. I'll do paid coaching. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't do that, and I will. I won't accept. You get a sincere are... thanks, a heartfelt yeah. thanks, but you're not gonna be treated any differently. Yeah. No. The 
this current situation with most of the world and the pandemic, I, I yeah. would not feel comfortable taking any money from anyone for this service whatsoever. Well, that's exactly why I take the money. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, masks are expensive. <laughs> so when you're getting all these fancy ones. Mm. What about a big kiss? Yes, I also accept kisses. No. Yes. No. No. I, well, I know you personally, Soupy. I, I, I'd go for it. <laughs> all right, so that, that puts us at about an hour and 45 minutes for this discussion. I think that that was very, uh, what is yeah, it? It's very that's productive. That's about the length of a coaching session. Can yeah. I add the thing that I've been waiting to add? Oh, end, sure, 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 by all means. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about like the whole carrot and a stick thing, right? Because I think uh, part of this uh, stream was uh, for coaches to kind of share like little things that they do to kind of like help teach, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, some of this will not be uh, applicable to new challenger because it depends on the tools available on the server. But um, one of the biggest ways I actually uh, encourage beginners to, to stick with the game and learn was to use uh, Discord uh, side, you know, like little carrots on sticks to encourage people to keep playing. Um, the big thing was basically uh, New Challenger kind of already supplies this uh, just organically, but having a community uh, mm -hmm. to encourage you to keep playing a game, having a circle of friends who play the game regularly online so that you can jump on with your buddies and like play more and like having, you know, like those regulars, uh, you know, like you could be, it could be on New Challenger, like forming a clique with some, a bunch of guys, you know, like, and you just play together. Uh, that's a great motivator. Another thing I do on my uh, on my coaching server is I've got a special role. Uh, I don't know if it's okay to see on the server. It's it's called the biggest stickers Maximus role, and it's got a really obnoxious, really fucking bright color, so that everyone knows that you've got this role. And that role is intentionally given out very rarely if you do something really exceptionally awesome. Like it doesn't have to be beat Daigo or something like that. But say you're a silver rank player and you're in a lobby with a bunch of golds and you manage to beat most of them. You know, like, even though you were a silver rank, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that you get that role and you feel like, hey, like, you know, like, I did something good. Uh, every time somebody ranks up, I give them a shout out in the announcements to let them know, like, congratulations to so-and-so for ranking up. Well done. Just so that, like, you know, like, people yeah. get involved. All these little things, um, just to kind of keep you motivated, like, giving you these kind of fucking uh, milestones that you think you're hitting um, to kind of keep you motivated and going. Like, Damn. I don't know how much of it we can apply on New Challenger, because again, a lot of this is on my server side thing, but anything you can do that you guys can come up with that adds that extra motivation um, really helps, I find. It's, it's made a big difference for the people I've helped. Mm -hmm. out here literally giving people gold stars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, literally gold, gold stars, yeah. Hey, yeah, it and, worked uh, in it second grade, it'll work now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, we were, I was, I, I've been bringing up parallels between coaching and teaching because the two are not entirely different. And a lot of the same uh, encouragement structures that you find inside of uh, education, you can, you can utilize inside of, you know, coaching. So I don't know if you ever felt like pursuing the, lu the lucrative teach teaching career, you could definitely side like take some of the skill sets that you're developing here and move that into that <laughs> yeah um uh one other thing uh this isn't really a carrot and a stick but this is again something i do in the server and i actually i actually want to bring this to new challenger as well i think it'll be great and uh i wouldn't have time to do it but i'm sure if a bunch of the coaches got together we could definitely uh uh fit it in uh mm -hmm. as a group and i have a thing called uh, student of the week that we do on the uh, on the coaching server where basically we pick out somebody who we think is going to greatly benefit from one week of just like focus coaching we still coach everyone else uh you know as much as we can but the community not just the coaches the community gets together and in whatever way they think they can help watching that person's replays uh just sitting down mm. and having a voice discussion about them to talk about concepts uh just anything basically and we we create like a big document we gather all this data we use the coaches as a filter because we're going to get a lot of stuff in to filter through the relevant information, we'll make a big document, and that document is also a baseline for another thing we're working on, which is having kind of like a medical report, but for coaching on every single student, so that uh, this is something that both we can edit and the student themselves can edit. It's kind of like a whole goal-oriented sheet. This actually fits into the whole uh, goal system um, mm -hmm. and the smart system. This is where we applied it. Uh, we have that and it's like prioritizes things to learn. Uh, it could be uh, overall like universal game concepts. It could be something like a combo. 
Um, but we we build this from that student of the week and it's there. And from that on point on, we can just build upon it incrementally. But that first time, we just get a nice big binge, uh, bunch of information from that student of the week. Yeah. I wonder if NCH is too big to have a single student of the week. It yeah, feels like it, it would, be, it would take forever of... to get to everyone, you know? No, Here's no, not, 300 not people that. all was, yelling at just... you at once. Yeah, yeah it I could was be just, just thinking a student that'd be too much. Too but much, I do too many... like... Uh, I do like the idea that Nymph has his own like coach server, and I was thinking about doing that. But I'm not entirely sure how to start it. Uh, I guess I would have to go back and contact a bunch of people I've coached. But well, uh, well the the dossier I'll... thing is a good idea. I keep text documents for the people that I've coached yeah. in the past. I haven't been as up to date on it as I yeah. would like to have been. But with a bit more organization and utilizing things like uh, Google Sheets, we could actually probably create a sort of shared teaching apparatus probably. for uh, yeah. various people on the server. Yeah. Speaking on um, uh, getting a coaching service started, uh, actually, because this really goes in with a carrot and a stick thing, I didn't start with a server. I actually didn't want to have a server because I wanted to keep everything on New Challenger. Uh, what I had were private chat groups on discord which i don't know if you guys are aware has a 10 person limit uh per chat group right so that's i initially started idea. with a sorry i'm just saying that's a good idea sorry yeah yeah um so i started with a private chat group with nine bronzes from eu with uh microphones uh and obviously me as a 10th <laughs> person um eventually a bunch of those bronzes got to silver so i made a separate chat group just for silvers so i i plucked that silver out of the bronze chat Put them into silver and now i've got space in the bronze chat again and this also allowed me to not get overwhelmed with too many students on uh, under my wing at once and then the uh. silver guys started to get to gold so i had to have a gold group and this was the, <laughs> this is where the cat on the stick thing comes in these guys in bronze become good friends again they become their own little click and they're they're playing together and then one of them ranks up he's gone now and that guy who was really good friends with that person now has this really big motivation to rank up as well because he wants like mm -hmm. like this silver group is mystical they haven't seen it they think it's going to be fucking rainbows and everything like it's the same as the bronze group it's just people are silver <laughs> but they don't know that they, they're putting up on this pedestal and they're motivated to rank up again and then then they get to silver and it's just like when you're playing ranked right you hit that new rank that shine wears off after a day or two you're already thinking about now i want to get super silver. um and that whole thing kept on going until we got to like people start to get to diamond and i was just like Man, like, this is getting too much, and people kept bugging me about making a service so everyone could... And I finally just... I spoke to Vinegar about it, so I was like, hey, you cool with this? Because, like, I don't know. And it was just like, yeah, it's fine, as long as people are learning. And I was like, alright, I guess I'll make one. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not trying to be selfish here, but It's not really a like, show oh, my, my, yeah. my coaching Discord. I've never yeah. seen Nymph ever ask any... Like, ever mention yeah, his coaching I, Discord. I've never seen Nymph even, like, mention that he has a... So, a I don't mention it. Page. Because it is like Fight Club. We don't mention yeah. it because I don't want people asking me if they can join. Because even yeah, though we've yeah. got a server now, I like to have an artificial cap on there because there's only so many people I can help at once. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah, the, so the idea behind these would be like self-contained units to sort of like... It, it's like a classroom for each individual coach where they're picking out individual students to work with and then working on that. Yeah. It, working it's not that very way. different than just, you know... Hey, me and my friends learning fighting games and just in an online environment instead of That's true, you know, at your yeah, house, exactly. at your school. Uh, maybe maybe we can turn them server into the Fight Club, and then only people who we think are truly special can get in, and you'll never know. Yeah, there's, there's two things. <laughs> hashtag really get roles. <laughs> so baseball super. <laughs> hashtag get roles is what you want to look at. That's uh, where you can pick up roles for yourself and be able to set yourself as being from North America, like East Coast, West Coast, stuff like that. Which yeah, helps so there's for, literally like, a channel called Get Roles, and at the very, very top, scroll all the way to the top, there's region roles. Do not confuse them for the pager roles. The region role will give you a color to your name, and depending on that, what the color is, it means something different. Orange is EU. There's different shades of purple for West Coast, Central and East Coast in America. Uh, which also covers Canada. Um, there's, of course, Oceania and and Asia. Uh, and, a and Asia America. and stuff like that. You know, it's regions. Yeah, and you know, other colors mean different things. Like blue is coach, pink is admin, etc. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have anything to cap this off? Yeah, I'm gonna uh, cut this off at 3 p.m. because that seems like a good round number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. 
Uh, six more minutes. Last All right. Question. Come on. Hurry up. I got a question about coaching someone with a negative mindset. I got a silver who makes bad risks, and then when given advice, says you don't have to tell me I'm trash. How can you tell this? Turn this negative mindset around. Glad I could catch this stream. Oh man. Midnight. My strategy like for this rock. is really quite simple. Uh, I mentioned it before in chat uh, or in text. It was called the compliment sandwich or the yeah. criticism sandwich. You start with something good that they're doing, then you go to something that they are doing that's bad, and then you go to something that they could immediately improve upon. So for mm -hmm. example, you'll play a set with somebody and you'll say, I love the way that you did anti-airs. I love your movement. I love uh, your pokes. You've been doing a great job. Yes. However, I would really like it if you stopped randomly trying to hit me with a ruffian kick. I'll one-up you on that. Don't even say however. Anytime you say but, say and instead. And. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, That's I a good agree. way to do it. Yeah, it's the um, shit sandwich. Absolutely, Yeah, I, I um, mentioned good things and bad things, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so, so you, you, like, like, you layer the good things and the bad things because you pull them up, and then, yeah, okay, their ego gets hit by that in the middle of it. But you're stating, like, oh, but you did this other thing that was really good, so don't feel so bad about it. Here's yeah. what you can do to Im immediately improve. And it will it sort of, like, softens the blow a great deal every time you do that. Yeah. D yeah. Depending on and the I'll... person. Sorry, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, because negative mindset is a pretty broad category. The one you're talking about specifically honestly sounds like more like somebody that's just tilted at the moment. Yeah. Um and they need to either walk it off or they like it, it that that compliment sandwich thing is good um yeah. it can stroke people's egos and stuff like that yeah. but if the person is just like negatively reacting to it i remember when i was in high school and i went into a class and i like was in a bad mood and i like did something and the teacher was a football coach and he told me get the hell out and come right back in with a better attitude because i can't teach you this way like this is just not going to work. So midnight, and... midnight's uh, added on to his comment. By the way, if you guys want to check that. Yeah, yeah. And he's been doing oh, it for okay. two it's... months. Straight okay. In okay. Okay. So, so if the compliment sandwich doesn't work, and if using but and uh, and using and instead of but doesn't work, then uh, is you know if you, try, if you tried your absolute best to try to change their mentality, and you know you know tell them that you know it's not that bad, like you can work on it, you know. Yeah, yeah but they're it's, just, it's but they're on, just being nihilistic. Then you know that's it's how you kind of like, yeah, rock it's kind of it's kind of on them at that point. To be yeah. honest, like, yeah, you're doing the best you can. And... If you're volunteering your time. Don't waste it. Another yeah. thing is just that sometimes uh, you're trying to tackle the negative attitude too much when you need to tackle the actual problem that he's not fixing in a different way. I don't know if that's if, already happened in Eastern negative attitude, in which case, you know, just... Yeah, it, it really do, depends, because, but... like, sometimes you get the answer of, why well, I know to do that. And it's like, well, if you know to do that, then you're supposed to execute that. And it's well, like, hey... it, it becomes this repetitive cycle. I don't know, maybe maybe I need to be corrected on that. Here's yeah, the thing, I don't right? know the like, exact... when, when someone's saying, like, you don't have to remind me I'm trash, right? Like, so this is context sensitive, so I don't always say this, but, like, there's something I always remind people. Like, let, let's say we're assuming this person is, like, let's say, bronze, silver, gold rank, or whatever, right? I'm like, look, you are trash, and that's okay. You're supposed to be trash at that rank, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, you should not be thinking that you're hot shit if you're a beginner, right? You need to you need to drop your expectations. Like, I, I, I still tell myself I'm bad at the game because I am, relatively speaking, to someone who's way better than me, I am trash. If you're diamond rank and you're playing like an ultimate grandmaster, you might as well be bronze to that person because he's going to wipe the floor with you most likely. It's mm. okay. Um thinking you're better than you are is going to set you back a lot more than thinking you're worse than you are in my opinion like it's still not a great mentality to be worse than you are but yeah. like thinking you're hot shit is just going to tilt you real quick when you're not doing well yeah and just yeah, specifically it... talk about your situation obviously i don't know what's been going on those two months and everything but if i had to guess i would say that uh if he's doing the same thing for two months that he knows he shouldn't do it's probably because he has muscle memory for that thing and for nothing else Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to fix is just to start giving him muscle memory for other things, right? Like if it's wake up DP is what he's doing wrong every single time. Yeah. He needs muscle memory for also doing wake up jab or wake up block or wake up uh, delay tech, right? Maybe Those you, need muscle memory as well. 
maybe you need to introduce a different way to practice not doing that thing. So instead of just playing a regular match and telling him to not do it, make it a mini game. Make the match different. Be like, yeah. you know, throws and sweeps, nothing else, right? That sort of yeah. stuff. Just make yeah. the match fun like a mini game. Um, and that goes back to that goal orientation thing that we were talking about earlier. Again, reworking the match so it's not wins and losses. It's yeah. success in execution versus failure at execution. And success in execution in mid-match is a lot more consistent and much more reliable on what you do than it is on external factors. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Midnight. Yeah, and don't be afraid to sandbag. You know what? <laughs> if, if you are, if you can't solve it, and sometimes you can't, because this is, once again, this sounds like one of those issues where it's more to do with the person than it is to do with, like, the game itself. Uh, as Rethan exactly. said, don't, don't have to be a volunteer psychologist. If they are going to be relentlessly negative about it, you can let them know that the, you're not into that sort of thing and you'd, you'd prefer if they were a little bit more positive about it and if once they get into the right headspace to be to, to learn as you as I forget who said it inside the thing but they said something along the lines of being sent out of the classroom by the teacher just like hey come back when your attitude's better well I'll, mm -hmm. uh, I can't teach you yeah. right now that was it, perfect. It seems like it seems like a dick thing to do at the time, but it's probably the best thing for them. Mm -hmm. Or you because... can do my favorite thing of shoving them onto a different coach. That's true. Yeah. That's also oh, a good problem. Please. That's a good strategy. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, coach might have a different strategy to approach it, and it might be good for them. Yeah, but mostly you just want to get back at that other coach. Yeah. I'm telling you all. No, if they're just getting you. upset because they keep losing against you because they keep doing the same thing, even though you keep telling them not to, then maybe, you know, don't be afraid to sandbag a little bit. I'm not saying immediately start playing worse. I mean, like, switch to a different character that you don't play that much or something. Tell him you're going to practice this thing. And so he... Uh, Talos is actually one of, the, one of our coaches also on NCH, and what he specifically does when he sandbags is he just doesn't block the entire round. <laughs> Yeah. They still win somehow. I, I I can't believe that you guys, some of you guys, can do that because like I just keep automatically going back into my standard mode of play after about like two to three rounds, and it's not like I'm trying to do that. You I only just have to do it for two to three rounds, and then they yeah. get that one win and they feel good about them. Oh, I oh, have no. walked forward with Sangeev and just forward heavy punch, forward heavy punch, for like just get them to like you know deal with it somehow. Yeah, you that's know. fair. I, I just feel like whenever I do something like that, I'm I'm purposely playing like an, a complete ass, so they're gonna like get mad about that sort of thing. Um, uh, yeah, that's why Pal's option yeah. of just not blocking is kind of a good way to do it, because you're playing normally. Yeah. Just whenever they happen to hit you, they actually get a hit, right? You don't you don't block uh, it. Right? One more thing I like to do personally, because like uh, I do a lot of repeat coaching sessions with, especially from people from my server, right? Like I'm always playing with them, so like it's not like just one or two sessions. Uh, so that I don't get bored to death fighting a bronze rank or a silver rank or a gold rank for like let's say three or four hours straight, um, I create little objectives in my mind, like little mini games. They're like, okay, I'm gonna try and heavily emphasize using stand heavy punch in this match or this round, and then next round I'm gonna heavily emphasize practicing my uh, stand and medium kick stuff. So I'm actually labbing stuff while I'm fighting, and if they can beat me as I'm doing that and they're getting happy, I don't tell them that. Oh, I was just. I was just fucking around like I'm just like hey good job because like let him have that win let him get happy like you know let him say that hey I got to take a match or a round off the coach um yeah. you know like I don't like to give an excuse because I uh I was oh, uh, yeah, yeah. sandbagging I you don't don't detract from that it's like that comic right which is like the small the, the younger brother beats his older brother at like smash or something and walks out of the room and it's like, did, did you let him win? And he's just like, no, it's fucking bullshit. He picked uh, Mac against this or something like that. <laughs> like, Dude, you don't by have the way, to... one of my favorite things ever from coaching is when the guys I've been coaching since they were bronze surpassed me for the first time. Um, and that made me super happy. Uh, when I get sometimes get, you know, some exceptionally salty people coming from other fighting games, so they, they think they're hot shit and they're learning Street Fighter and they can't beat me, which I keep telling them is totally okay because they're new at this game, like, it's gonna take a while to learn. And they're like, man, I can't wait until I get better at this game and I'm gonna beat the crap out of you. And I'm like, dude, I can't yeah. wait for that day either, like, that's gonna, that, that yeah. means I did my job well, like, you know, like, yeah. I'm gonna be super happy for you. Uh, I don't care if I really good. 
it feels really good to get someone to at least your level or better, and then you're like, well, shit, I just played myself. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I repeat this to pretty much every new player that thinks I'm amazing at the game, is that I'm actually really simple. I'm very shallow about my understanding of this game. Uh, I'm like a pamphlet. Once you understand what I'm doing, I become actually very easy to beat. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a trash. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm actually free. It's not uh... even funny. All right, so uh, it's about three five now. I think this conversation was fantastic. It was a good, it was yeah. a good two hours. Um, I'm gonna upload this to YouTube later on, Ski Patrol, so you can go back through and watch it if you were interested in doing that. And right that. now you can just watch the VOD back. Yeah, also the VOD yeah. is going to be available as well. I thank you all of you for showing up. Uh, the coaches, all of your comments were fantastic. I really liked a lot of the discussion we had going. And I was a huge fan of the con of the questions that we got from the chat. They were they were all incredibly yeah. useful. No, like Very hardly questions. any trolling, Soupy. Yeah, we we got more people than I expected watching. So it opened up for some good discussion. All right. Uh, any closing comments from anybody else? Or get good. <laughs> get good. Yeah. Want you pick up Marvel get good. For Capcom Three. Oh, you shell. <laughs> And melty blood while you're at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd take that trip to the restroom any day. All right. Have a good one, folks. Play Sam yeah. Show. <laughs> All right. So my PayPal is...